to take something away. If you do, you might be able to handle them. It's a long shot today. All right, Todd Thompson, the freshman from Sepulpa, Oklahoma, set to kick off for Oklahoma. Missouri will get the football first, and Craig Lammers has dropped deep for the Tigers. He also a freshman out of Jefferson City, Missouri. We are underway in Columbia. And it'll be Lammers deep in his own end zone, and he'll leave it there. He drops it. It goes over the end line. So the Tigers will start out first and 10 from their own 20-yard line, and Warren Seitz will lead the Missouri offense onto the field, a unit that has not had trouble moving the ball but has not played the likes of this Oklahoma defensive team yet this year. Of course, the center is the story, Kevin. Dal Lockwood is a converted tackle. That's right. Clay is maybe one of the best offensive tackles in the country. They'll have to go behind him all day. Johnson, a great receiver. Lammers is a walk-on. And Seitz, he'll have to have a big day today against Oklahoma's defense. Wallace, Darrell Wallace, the tailback, moving in on some Missouri records that we'll tell you about. He carries it on the first play of the game over the right side, and there's little running room there. Murphy was the first to hit him. And Bosworth, likewise, was in on the stop. Bosworth is usually in on the stop. You see, as we've talked so much about him, Steve Bryan's the unheralded member of that front five. Great player. You'll see a lot of these guys in the NFL very shortly. The linebackers are outstanding, too, for Oklahoma. They're very active. Bosworth and Migliazzo, I talked about him in the chalk talk. They're tough. Derek White, Glenn Brown, and Rayburn, number five in the country in pass defense. Sights on second and seven to the air. And he guns it out complete. Incomplete now, they rule it, that he dropped it. Intended for Wallace and around the 28-yard line. Would have been short of the first down anyway. So Missouri will face a third and seven from their own 23. Opening series of the game. The Tigers coming off their first victory of the year at Iowa State last week. What Missouri has to do is not become predictable against Oklahoma. They're tough enough when they're reacting, but when they've got an idea of what you're going to run, you're really in trouble. And that means pass on first down, run in long yardage situations, use a lot of traps, try to trick them. And they're in a throwing situation here. Sights with time. Now he's flushed out of there. He can hurt you with the run, but he's going to be run out of bounds short of the first down. Good defensive work by Scott Garl. The nickel back in there, number 49, to run him out short of the first down, and Missouri will have to punt it away. Seitz is a big guy, 6'4", and he was close to a first down. He might have had an opportunity if he turned his head, ducked his head, and, and, and went for that first down. Now, Missouri is punting into the wind, and that's going to be tough today. It's a strong wind, and Marlon Adler hangs it up, and it really gets caught in the wind. Shepard from his own 36. Still alive as he gets close to the 45-yard line, hemmed in short of the 45 at the 44, dropped there by Tony Fascinelli. A 35-yard punt by Adler into the wind as Jamel Holloway leads the Sooner wishbone onto the field. And the line has been reshuffled to a point where these guys are now comfortable with where they're playing. Pope had been playing guard, Johnson had been playing guard, and Phillips was playing a tackle spot. And the tight end, Jackson and Shepard. These are the two leading receivers. We'll watch them all day. The backfield, they run a lot of guys in and out. They've all got speed, and they can all hit for the goal line. The kitty core, they call him in Oklahoma. Here's Holloway. He'll keep it on first down. He tries to cut up field, and he's hemmed in right there. As he crosses the 45-yard line, Steve Vandergriff, number 32, the freshman linebacker for Missouri, made the stop. Defensive unit for Missouri, much maligned, but Darling is a pretty good middle guard, and Shapur is a first-line player. Kloman does his job. Linebackers, they've got some seniors, but the guy to watch is Vandegrift. He just made that tackle stuff. Of course, McMillan, leading tackler on the team. That spells trouble for Missouri when your safety is the leading tackler. And Fascinelli, the only senior in that secondary. Holloway, same play. This time he sheds a tackle in midfield, breaks another one. He's down the sideline. McMillan tries to knock him out of bounds. He's still going inside the Missouri 20. That's the dimension that Holloway gives the Sooner wishbone. Well, they ran, they ran to think to the short side here, and it was all. All Holloway. That's what made the play go. Now they're on the hash and they're going to the short side of the field. Missouri does a pretty good job on the corner, but this is what Holloway will do to you. He's just a great runner. Let's the momentum of the tackler take him. And then I thought he stepped out of bounds right there. The official didn't call it. He goes down inside the 20-yard line. 34-yard pickup. Stan Long, the freshman, had to bring him down, and the Sooners are on the move. Their first possession. They run the big fullback up the middle, Lydell Card. He has short yardage. And this is where Missouri has to stiffen because it would be demoralizing to them to allow Oklahoma to take their first series and punch it in. 
It's a nice job by the middle guard Darling stacking up the center Simpson for Oklahoma. Now one thing I talked about all year is how the field gets shorter when you get closer to the end zone. For the wishbone that's not true. This is a running power offense and when you get down inside the 20 the 10 yard line the defense creeps up a little bit but you've still got the strength of your offense working for you. Barry Switzer calls Holloway is knuckleballer and Eric Mitchell is fastballer and here comes the knuckleballer with it again. Slips as he turns the corner and there is the turf coming into play as Stan Long is there to make sure. I was on the field earlier. I was talking to Barry Switzer about the turf and he was saying he'd never seen anything like it where there was sand on the top of artificial turf. It's hard to see. It looks green to you but there is a little bit of a film in places of sand. It's called on the turf and it is of some concern to the players and their, and their footage and when you have players like Oklahoma that get stopped and turn on a dime it, it can be a little bit of a disadvantage. Third and a long three for the Sooners as Barry Switzer looks on. Holloway. He's met as he tries to turn the corner. Fascinelli came up and stuck him. So Oklahoma will have a kicking situation. Great job by Fascinelli. Now the corners have to be very much involved in the running game. This is not like a regular, like a regular defense. Here comes Fascinelli, reads option, and he's got every, he's got both arms, his chest, everything around Holloway and stops him. Tim Lasher will come on for the Sooners and they'll spot it at the 18 which would make it a 28 yard field goal and Lasher has not missed from this distance all year. He's five for five and he'll try to put Oklahoma on the board first. He gets it off cleanly and he splits the uprights from 28 yards out. So Oklahoma with 11 and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter on the scoreboard with Lasher's field goal and they lead the Tigers three to nothing. We'll come back to the Tiger Den here at Furrow Field in Missouri after this. Reminder, this telecast is the sole property of Raycom Sports. And any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this telecast without the express consent of Raycom Sports is prohibited. I'll bet you already knew that. Oklahoma with a field goal from Lasher of 28 yards jumps out on top 3 nothing. We mentioned this was the 76th meeting, but Missouri has been unbeaten here in Columbia the last two times they've met. And with the wind, Thompson bangs it through the end zone, and Missouri will start from the 20 again. And that wind, folks, is really going to play a role before this one is out. This is the defensive team that Missouri must battle today. They don't get any better, Kev. Well, everyone from the beginning of the season has said the strength of the Oklahoma team is defense, and they've lived up to it during the course of the season. What Missouri has to do here, and what Woody says they were going to do, is take what they give them. They don't give you much, but every defense, there's only 11 guys, they will give you something. The defensive coaching staff of the Sooners, Michael Scott, is in at fullback for Missouri. Remember, they call him the freezer, and he throws a great block that springs Wallace. So Scott making like William Perry the refrigerator in Chicago throws the key block that springs Wallace. Well the important thing for Scott at 270 pounds is make the block and get out of the way. Right side of your screen number 99 he makes the block Wallace cuts inside good block on the corner and Wallace is quick and nifty and Scott being as big as he is 6566 six, he'll screen Scott he'll screen Wallace. Eight yard pickup for Wallace second and two for the Tigers. Woody Woodenhofer told us that Michael Scott is rejuvenated at fullback and he his partner Wallace scurries through for the first down before Dante Jones the sophomore from Dallas Texas brought him down. That's what Wallace has done so far third in the big eight and coming into the game needed just 59 yards to move into third place on the all time Missouri list for a single season and he'd be ahead of Charlie Brown. And he's within striking distance of Joe Moore's single season record here at Missouri. He needs 435 coming into today's game. Certainly within his reach with three games remaining. And here he goes again. He's getting a steady diet this afternoon. But that time, Casillas was there to meet him. So important that Missouri runs the ball against Oklahoma. If they're able to run the ball up the middle, get that cutback out of the I formation, it will open up the rest of their offense. And I, there's no question that Woody knows that. The Missouri team knows it, and Oklahoma knows it. The I formation, they're going to have to come and try to stuff Michael Scott at 270 pounds. Is this going to be a tough assignment? Missouri comes out of the eye on second and nine. Scott is in the backfield, and he'll be there to block. Sites drills it complete near the 40. That is going to be short of the first down. Vernon Boyd in there on the receiving end. 
I was watching Scott on that play, standing up to block in the backfield. It, it is, in fact, another lineman. And if you think about the rushing game, as you take a look at Vernon Boyd from Camden, New Jersey, you think about the rushing game for Oklahoma. These guys, take a look at 99, the left side of your screen. Now these, you got a rush again. This is no little running back here. That was Darrell Reed, and he didn't look too anxious to get at Scott. Third and three, Sight's going to sprint out. He's got to hurry. Bosworth chases him, but it's a first down for Missouri. Sykes knew just where he had to go, and he picked up the first down. One thing about Michael Scott to keep in mind, it's not something that's new to him. He played fullback in high school. Now he runs a 4.840. He's listed at a 4.840, which, depending on the timing, it could be faster than that. And Sykes, having established a little bit of running game, completed a pass. You get Oklahoma's defense thinking, and a broken play will work against any defense because a broken play means the defense did its job, and you're just running to the open spot. First down for the Tigers at their own 45. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. Nine and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Oklahoma scoring on their first possession with a 28-yard field goal. They lead it 3-0. Wallace scooting up the middle and gets a couple before he snowed under. Make that Vernon Boyd on the carry for Missouri. Brian was at the bottom of the pile, the junior out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Let's take another look at what Michael Scott's doing. And what he's doing is creating space. He's, look what he does here on number 40. Again, Darrell Reed, he's creating space for the running back. The defensive corner or the defense, the guy on the outside defensively for Oklahoma usually will shut down, come down, drive that back into the play. He's not going to drive number 99 into the play. He's too big, so he's creating a lot of room for the back to run. He got four before all was said and done. Second and six. Sites will throw wide open. Oh, it's intercepted. He threw it behind him. Sonny Brown for the Sooners back to midfield, and he's dropped. It appeared as though Sites and Junebug Johnson misread each other because Johnson was open on the break. Well, it's just, it's not a good pass. It's very windy, and Seitz is throwing into the wind here. Now, Junebuck gets an inside release. It's a zone. Ball will go over his right shoulder right there. If that ball's thrown inside towards the sideline, Sonny never would have been able to get it, and it could have been a completion. Now, that's the thing that Missouri can't do. They can't turn the ball over. If they do, they're going to be in trouble. Allis, Texas, Sonny Brown. He'll his, be around next year, just a junior. His third interception of the year. And Missouri's defense under the gun as Oklahoma takes over at the Tiger 47-yard line. Holloway's going to throw it wide open down the middle of the field to Shepard if he can get there, and he overthrew him. Well, the wishbone will give you that all day, won't it, Kev? If they, run on, if they throw on first down and complete them, Missouri doesn't have a chance, but the one thing Oklahoma doesn't do is complete the ball a lot. I mean, they don't they just don't throw the ball all that much, especially with Aikman out of there. And their passing game sometimes is not in sync. You have to hope for them to drop the ball or overthrow or throw wide. If they do that, you have a chance to stop the running game. And with the wind at his back, Holloway lofted it, and that ball just got caught in the wind and took off on him. Second and ten now for the Sooners. Holloway is going to keep it himself. He's pressured. He got the pitch off. A nice job by Holloway to get rid of that ball to Spencer Tillman. But still a short game. That was great defense. Great, great defense. Trem tremendous reaction by Jamel Holloway. Talk about an athlete. But watch the Missouri defense. Jamel looks wide open at this point, but here comes the black shirt. It's up here on the inside. He makes the pitch, and yet there are more defenders. Great play on the corner. I couldn't see the number, but that's just great. And, you know, they did that against Nebraska. It was Floyd, I guess. They got outside. They were able to shut down that outside running game. Third and seven for the Sooners. Holloway's going to go to the air. Looking over to the sideline, and Shepard drops the ball. He was wide open, and that's what you said, Kevin. You hit it on the nose. They've got to drop the ball for Missouri to be successful against a wishbone that passes, and they did it there. Holloway with a bullet right in the chest to Shepard, and uh, you have no chance. He was wide open because he typically will be wide open. You have to bring nine men up on the line. Injured Tiger down on the field. Dick Shapura, number 74. They can ill afford to lose the junior out of Sarasota, Florida, who has played so well for them at that left defensive end spot. He looked like he was talking. looked like he was all right. What I began to say was that uh, you have to bring nine men up, and when you do that and they run play action off the wishbone, somebody is going to be wide open. If Holloway finds him, hits him, and they catch it, it's off to the races. So it's a punting situation for Oklahoma, and we're going to have Mike Winchester do the honors as Shapura is helped off the field. And 
Doesn't look good. Barry Switzer looking on for Oklahoma. Now Winchester's second in the conference, Kevin, but how do you adjust to a win blowing as strongly as this one is at his back as a punter? You don't want to kick it in the end zone, but it's difficult to hang it up there and get it to take any kind of a roll for you. The thing you have to be, I used to punt, the thing that you have to be really careful of is not trying to put it easy, because if you, it's like taking half a golf swing, you hit the ball about two feet. If he takes a half swing at this with his foot, he could just kick it 10 yards. And he gets a good punt. Good touch on it. Bounces inside the five and takes a Missouri bounce into the end zone. So for Winchester, a 44-yard punt. Missouri for the third time in a row will begin from their own 20 when we come back. 7.40 left. From high atop for O Field here in Columbia, Missouri, Kevin Slate along with Kevin Colley. They're wearing those tiger paws on their faces. That means war here in Columbia as we watch from for O Field. We talked with Don Faro last night, a legend here in Columbia. Field named after him. He was the coach and athletic director. What a congenial gentleman that we had a chance to visit with last night as Wallace carries the mail for a short gain over the left side. And I mentioned we're high atop the field here in this press box that has been renovated so nicely here by John Kekaris. And what a job he's done here with the press facility in Columbia. That is our vantage point. As we look down on a crowd of about 50,000 plus here in Columbia, Woody Wittenhofer. Very happy, said he shed some tears after that first victory last week. His first as a college football head coach. Second and seven for the Tigers. Sight still has it. Plenty of time. He zings it complete to Johnson at the 40. He's to the 45 before he's dropped back there. Well, if Sights gets that kind of time, it's going to be a long day for the secondary of Oklahoma. Play action with Michael Scott in the backfield. They have to respect it for Oklahoma. They might be able to run the ball. Number 99, Michael Scott coming out like it's going to be a block. It is on Reed. It's all play action. And then a great pass into the wind by Sights. The June bug in the middle of his zone. Missouri able to move the ball on the Oklahoma defense. Maybe a little bit of a surprise for the Sooners. Pickup of 22 on that play. First down for Missouri at their own 45. This is Michael Scott with his first carry. Everybody wants a piece of him, and Miliazzo was the first one to get there. Michael, a little slow going into the line, and that's natural. When you're not used to handling the ball, he's more worried, I think, about holding onto the ball than he is running. you got to run with your head up. And uh, as a converted uh, defensive lineman, even though he ran uh, the ball in high school, I don't know that he's got it down yet in college. And, uh, I think that's really just to keep Oklahoma honest more than get Michael Scott out into the open. We'll be nice and give him a yard on the play. Second and nine for Missouri at their own 46. Tigers trail the Sooners three to nothing. Here goes Wallace, and he's hit and dropped as he slashed his way across the left side. Jeff Tupper, big number 78 on top of the pile. And down at the bottom, of course, is Bosworth. When you that, think about, excuse me again, when you think about offense and defense, to think about offense, what you want to think about is creating space. When you think about defense, they want to eliminate space. And the Oklahoma linebackers do such a great job of it. And what they do here is they read the play. They come up, look at all the white shirts just waiting to get their hands on Wallace. And uh, really nobody even touched them on that play. They were able to come in and make the play. The Oklahoma linebackers as good as any in the country. Third and eight for Missouri. Sights under pressure. He's hit as he throws, but he completes it anyway to Thetford, the tight end at midfield, well short of the first down. Good job by Sights to even get it off. Third and long, Oklahoma knows they're going to run. They're looking for screen draw, maybe something short to the tight end. And what Thetford needed to do and Sites needed to do, they needed to get a pattern that took him past the first down marker. They're not going to outrun Oklahoma's defense. Adler on to punt it away. Doesn't get all of this one. Fair catch signaled for and a nice grab made on the run that time by Derek White. Five minutes remaining in the first quarter here in Faroe Field. A 28-yard Marlon Adler punt has Oklahoma in business. 3-0 the Sooners. Faroe Field, Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. Barry Switzer in his 13th year, and that's what he's done at Oklahoma. He's not only tasted the wine of greatness, he's, he drank the whole bottle. <laughs> first down Sooners from their own 20. Out of the wishbone. It's the big fullback car over the left side. Missouri doing a pretty good job so far, Kev, at defensing this wishbone. If you're playing defense now, you've got to be careful of the big play, Kev, because when, you're, when they're on their own 20, you don't want them to get them outside. They'll go all the way. Now, you've got to be careful of that fullback, and that's what Missouri did. Check the fullback. If he has the ball, you tackle him, and then you get outside. But don't go away without checking that fullback. 
Oklahoma fans know well that the Sooners have been a slow starting team this year. In the first quarter, it's not been their baby. They've only scored 20 total points coming in today. But plays like this by Holloway, he might be gone. Ron Floyd is chasing him, and he collars him at the Missouri 34-36 yard line. They'll say he stepped out of bounds, but Holloway is electrifying. And what he did, he used the fullback for a screen. He handed it to him on the last play, but on this play, what they did, they faked to the fullback up the middle, and the big guy is able to make a hole. We're picking up in the middle here, as you see Holloway, but what he did, he followed him into the hole, then he cut back across the field. And thank goodness for Floyd on the backside for Missouri, or Holloway's gone. Now, this guy really adds the extra dimension to the Oklahoma offense, and you're seeing it here in the first quarter. He's like Elliot Ness. He's untouchable. And he gets another big gainer deep into Missouri territory, and here they go again, the Sooner wishbone in command, and they're eating up chunks of yardage now. That time it was Patrick Collins, who was just a sophomore. Collins started the game at the right halfback spot. He's a sophomore as we watch it again. Stafford, a freshman, and Carr, a sophomore. And another freshman, Terry Walker, number 40, does what a linebacker has to do. He keeps his feet, has enough presence of mind to turn around and get a hand on Collins, and he's the one who made the play. But still, five-and-a-half-yard pickup for Oklahoma. Missouri's got to do better than that on first down. Second down for the Sooners. And they'll run Carr, big hole over the left side. He's into the secondary before McMillan rides him for five yards. And inside the 20 as McMillan needed help from Fasanella. When you have as much talent as the Sooners do, when you have as much talent and speed, you really need to depend on them if you're on the other team to make mistakes. If this team doesn't fumble and they're allowed to get the fullback into the secondary like this, they're just going to murder you. McMillan, you, McMillan's a big guy. He was a linebacker last year. He had his hands on car, and he was just going along for the ride. They just, they've just got big, strong people. You need to get team defense to stop. Holloway with the two big plays, one of 34, one of 39. Flags fly as Carr goes over the right side, and uh, it appeared that Missouri jumped offside. Another difference in the Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma offense, we talked about it when we showed you the starting lineup. What they did, something kind of odd. They reversed their tackles and guards offensively. The tackles became guards, the guards became tackles. And the reason for that, Coach Switzer said, was because they were playing bigger people over their guards. So they needed bigger people. So the obvious thing was to take those big tackles, put them at guard and reverse it. And it's worked very well. The offense has taken off since that point. John McClinock, the referee, ready to give us the call. So you give them five and make it first and five. Speaking of the officials, there they are. And you have backed up against the wishbone. Stop the fullback. What you want him to do is pitch the ball. You want to get a shot at the quarterback on the corner or have him pitch the ball, try to get a turnover. So you got to stop the fullback. Holloway still has it. Tucks under. Look at him move, would you? I mean, Daryl Darling, a fumble, and Missouri recovers. It may have been Rick Cloman at the bottom of the pile. He got up jumping, but I'm not sure. Perhaps it was Cloman that got it. Well, they did exactly what they had to do, Kev. They stopped the fullback. They got a shot at the quarterback. He's just a little guy. Watch Holloway as he ducks in. There's a hat right on the helmet there. Can't pick up his number. The ball falls right right into his hands. Number 91, Rick Cloman. Cloman, the senior out of Baldwin, Missouri. Very happy man on the sidelines. The Sooners denied. They still lead 3-0. We'll be back. Fortunate with the turnover, Rick Cloman, the fumble recovery. We're coming your way live from Perot Field. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. Three minutes, six seconds left, first quarter. Still 3-0 Oklahoma. The Sooners coming on the full blitz and sights. Lucky he didn't fumble the handoff because Bosworth just teed off, timed the snap perfectly, and there's a guy that seeks no peace in his kingdom. Yeah, good advertisement for changing the snap count. Brian Bosworth, 237 pounds, and he runs like he's 150. Hey, this is a mean guy, number 44 from behind him. He was right on the snap count, and Sites did a great job not just to fumble the ball. Bosworth was there before the back was. A loss back to the nine, a loss of four. Second and 14 for the Tigers, deep in their own territory. And they run the first man through, a fumble, loose ball. Sooners trying to get it, still loose, and they've got it. I don't know what happened, but the ball went shooting into the air. And I was just about to say, backed up against their own goal line, they can't make a mistake, and they do. I believe that was Michael Scott. When they were trying to hand the ball to Michael Scott, Remember, this guy's a defensive tackle last week. 
No, I'm sorry, it's John Red. Looks like he gets hit by his own man pulling by. The ball comes loose, and there's nothing but white shirts around it. That ball was moving. Oh, look at it. Still loose there. And June Bug Johnson there from Missouri, number 12, was, was looking to get into the action. And then everybody jumped on it. And Missouri, or Oklahoma has it. And an Oklahoma player, Tony Rayburn, is hurt. He was near the bottom of that pile. And he got his knee busted up from the back, it appears. And working on his lower leg also. That's what happens in those things. When you start diving in there, I used to hate those things. I'd rather be the last guy in because the first guy in gets about 200,000 pounds on him. I've heard that you were always the last one in. <laughs> Even if the ball came right next to you. you know, I have to be honest with you, I was known to have been bitten in, in a few of those piles. <laughs> Did you bite back? You always look out for the guy with the single bar face mask because he's got it because he wants to be able to lift it up and take a bite out of you. <laughs> Rayburn's coming off mostly under his own power. Rayburn, the leading tackler in the secondary for Oklahoma, he's a good player. So Missouri backed up against their own goal line. Oklahoma with a ball, first down at the 16, the second Tiger turnover, and it first comes at a bad time and a bad location. You can't do that against Oklahoma. This is tough, demoralizing for the defense. When they get a turnover, they have it turned right back over to the other team. Spencer Tillman now in the Oklahoma backfield. That's Collins who breaks the wishbone. And here's Tillman. Big hole over the right side, but it closes fast. Ron Floyd and Eric McMillan do a great job for Missouri. It was Floyd that came up first and allowed McMillan to make the sure tackle. When they put that guy in motion, it stretches the defense, but they lose, lose one of their lead blockers there. And what that amounted to really was just a little power dive off the right side. Missouri Reddit came up and made a Pretty darn good play on a wide play, dropping him for a half-yard loss. When Tillman took the ball, it looked like he had big yardage. But Floyd did such a great job to come up and force the play and then allowed McMillan to clean up. Second and 11 for the Sooners. Holloway, who's been their threat. He's got a lot of black shirts around him, and down he goes. A great defensive play by Vandergriff, the freshman linebacker out of Grandview, Missouri. Vandergriff, the red shirt freshman in Missouri. The Tigers react so well. Remember Woodenhofer, he was a pretty good defensive coach for the Steelers, and these guys, if they know anything, I don't think they have the talent to match up with Oklahoma, but they know defense, and uh, if they're not overpowered physically, they're going to be around the ball all the time. Oklahoma simply comes totally out of the wishbone on third and 11. Holloway's going to run a quarterback draw. Cloman hit him first. Now he gets loose. He's inside the 10 and goes down very close to the first down, but I believe he fell short of it. He literally fell short of it. That's exactly what happened. There's that sand on the field again. What a great performance by Holloway on that play. That was all athletic ability against about four or five defensive players. Well, that's a big play. He picks up nine. And Oklahoma's going to go for the first down on fourth down. Well, you'll hear the crowd of 50,000 plus come into it here. Stop the fullback. Stop the fullback. Make them go wide and then just react to it. You got 11 man line just about. Holloway going to keep it himself. Fumbles the ball. And I think Oklahoma got it. A break for the Sooners. Greg Johnson, the right tackle, fell on it for a first down. Johnson, recovering. With just 14 ball. seconds left in the first quarter, and Oklahoma leading 3 0. They're knocking on the door again. First and goal for the Sooners with, well, now the time expired. They're going to stay with 14 seconds left and it expired before they got the snap off. That ends the first quarter, and Oklahoma will now have to go into the win. But they lead the Tigers 3-0, and they've got first and goal inside the five. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. 3-0 as we begin play in the second quarter. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. And Oklahoma with a first down inside the Missouri 5. And as if they needed a break, Oklahoma got one anyway when Holloway appeared to be stopped short on a fourth and two gamble, and he fumbled it forward for a first down. They run Perry, the fullback, and he's down to the one. Walker was there, number 40, for Missouri to make the stop. The thing about that fumble is that uh, there's no reason for him not to fumble. If he stopped short of a first down deep in the territory, it's really a smart thing. Not saying he did, but it's a smart thing to fumble the ball. 
because if you fumble it forward and your guys pick it up, it is a first down. And there was a rule like that in pro football. They changed that rule because of Kenny Stabler. The Raiders and uh, Dave Casper, they've kicked it around a little bit. Second and goal from the one, and that is an Oklahoma touchdown. Perry cracking pay dirt for the Sooners, and they add on to their 3 nothing lead. your fullback if you're on the goal line that's what you got to do stop the fullback they couldn't stop him because they got a great block in there by Anthony Phillips he just cleaned out his man watch 68 see him just rest in front of the fullback there's just no place for the black shirts to get in behind him and make the tackle with only a couple of yards to go it's a touchdown Lasher on for the conversion and he splits the uprights and it's a 10 to nothing Oklahoma lead with 14 26 left in the first half so the Tigers have to get it moving offensively. They will have the strong wind at their backs when we return to Faro Field after this. At Faro Field in Columbia, Missouri, Leon Perry going in for the Oklahoma touchdown. A one-yard plunge for him, and they take advantage of the Missouri fumble deep in their own territory. And the Sooners have a 10 to nothing lead, and they're in command so far. Missouri has shown signs of moving the ball, and they're going to have to with the wind at their backs here in the second quarter. Short scoring drive. You can't shorten the field for Oklahoma like that. Thompson, you can see the effect of the win. Kicking into the win, that ball is caught on the run at the 18-yard line by Clark. A flag is down as he gets to about the 27-yard line. The flag was thrown way across the field here on the near side. And we'll wait as the officials talk it over and decide on the infraction. The wind really held Thompson's kick up. Tough on a kickoff. Sometimes it's sometimes better to kick it low against the wind like that. You kick those end over end things, the wind will really play havoc with the ball. Not quite sure if I understand that. Ineligible receiver downfield penalty that he's signaling. We talked about the sand, and you can see it. It fluffs itself up to the top surface. It's supposed to sink down into this type of turf. And it hasn't quite done that. I was talking to Michael Scott yesterday before uh, at practice, and he said uh, they came in and vacuumed it off already once. But still, there's some surface sand Evidently out there. Evidently, they missed a spot. Yeah, or two. Strategically placed, of course. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, Missouri has a 12th man on the field, so that's the penalty that they're going to call. Woody Widenhofer looks like a guy who was dealt four cards in a game of five-card stud. He can't understand this one. More like six cards in this case. Woody said, you mean I can't have 12 guys out there? Sometimes you need them going against Oklahoma. What a great guy, Woody Widenhofer. No flag. Woody told him to recount. <laughs> He knows it's going to take time here at Missouri, but he's had such a strong recruiting year. And one guy you won't see play today probably is Ronnie Cameron, the quarterback freshman from Missouri, who has a sore throwing arm. And I know that Woody's chomping at the bit to get him into the game, but he doesn't want to use him while he's hurt. There's the rushing story so far. Oklahoma, most of that coming with Jamel Holloway on two runs that have given him 80 plus yards. Wallace trying it off the right side and short running yardage for him. On that play, Michael Scott went outside. There was nobody to block, and he kept running. Michael's got to find somebody to block. He's got to look for somebody. And uh, again, it's great to insert a guy 270 pounds into the fullback in the eye formation, but you do lack a little bit of experience and a feel for the position. And, and what you gain in weight and speed, you're going to lose in experience. A pickup of two. It'll be second and eight for the Tigers. Warren Seitz will throw it. Time. Now guns it incomplete. It looked like he was intending it for Adrian McBride, who's returned to action for the first time today since early in the season after suffering a cracked collarbone. But he underthrew him tremendously. He may have been throwing for Junebug Johnson. In that case, he overthrew him. He's got that wind behind him now. He needs to make an adjustment. He's thrown into the wind, behind the wind. And uh, sometimes uh, with the wind behind him, sometimes it's, it's, it's as difficult to throw with the wind behind you as it is throwing into the wind. 
Eddie Essen in at fullback now for Missouri. The Tiger mascot on the sidelines. He replaces Michael Scott. Essen does, not the mascot. Third and eight, and watch out here because Oklahoma knows it's a passing situation. They, have, they come straight with a rush, but Murphy breaks free, and he pulls him down at the 15, and Murphy just broke free and did it all by himself. Watch Kevin Murphy, number 39. Dave Niptash trying to block on him. When you have to go one-on-one, -on -one, it's tough. 72, the left side of your screen. He's, gonna, he's not even there. You don't see him. He disappears. Murphy gives him a little move. And then it's a sprint. Murphy will win that one every time against Seitz. Adler with a strong wind at his back kicks a low driving ball that gets a pretty good roll and goes out of bounds at the Oklahoma 36. I'm surprised Adler just didn't try to tee off on that one. Maybe he did and just didn't do it. 13-11 remaining in the first half. Oklahoma leading 10 to nothing. We'll be back after these words from Coors. At Faro Field, Columbia, Missouri, the black and gold, the prevailing colors today, but Oklahoma has a 10 to nothing lead. Jamel Holloway's rushed for nearly 100 yards already, their freshman quarterback. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley, Oklahoma taking over after the Missouri punt at their own 36. They'll run the big fullback, Liddell Carr, the sophomore out of Enid, Oklahoma. Rick Cloman, the senior out of Baldwin, Missouri, making the tackle for Missouri. What you'd like to do if you're Oklahoma is run that fullback every time. And what you need to do if you're the Tigers is make them go to the other options in the wishbone. If they can get away with that clean handoff to the fullback every time. The weakness in the wishbone is all the different things they have to do with the ball. Missouri made great second half adjustments defensively last week. They limited Iowa State to just 78 total yards. But look at Holloway. He sheds tacklers. He breaks tackles. McMillan finally stands him up. Got help from Shapura, but not before he's deep into Missouri territory. And another Oklahoma first down. He's been the whole story for Oklahoma. Well, the thing about this guy is he's so slippery. An arm tackle just won't do the job for you. When he gets to the corner, Right here's where you want him, but you want a clean shot at him. Now, as he comes in here, you see, you just can't seem to get a clean shot at him. When you do, you've got to go for the ball and get a turnover. McMillan had a good shot at him. He didn't get that hat on the ball, break it loose, and get the ball back. While Oklahoma's got the ball, they are dangerous, real dangerous. Well, they've put two games back-to-back -back of 500 yards or more, and I think the Sooners, this time the left side of the line, Eric Pope jumped. Of course, they'll point at Missouri. What Missouri did was shift. They went to an over defense or an under defense. They shifted the line, and that got everybody in Oklahoma excited, and they jumped. I believe this is on Oklahoma. And it'll cost the Sooners a handful. Missouri is shifting at the last moment. What they want to do is give them a look and then change the look at the last minute and try to guess which way the play is going. The Sooners come into this game averaging better than 31 points, and that's good enough for 12th in the country. They did lose 11 fumbles and a 12th one here in the first quarter, so that's the wishbone dimension. They'll fumble the ball, and that's what Missouri needs is a few more of those. That's an oddity. They had not recovered a fumble on a turnover, I believe, until their fifth game of the year. They had not recovered a fumble. First and 15 for the Sooners. Right up the middle goes Carr, and Floyd makes the shoe top tackle, but big yardage for Carr on first and 15, and that was the play they needed to stop the wishbone. Good block on the right side there. Again, that's the play. You're right, Kevin. You've got to stop that thing. If you, if you don't stop the fullback, the fullback in the wishbone should not be able to get out of bed the next day. He's the guy that should just be pounded every single play. If you let him loose, the one time he's got the ball, he's going straight up the field. He picked up 11 yards. Second and four for the Sooners. This is Holloway. He's forced to make a bad pitch. Ball still on the ground. Everybody chasing it. Still loose in midfield. And I think Oklahoma got it. Eric Pope. I mean, there were all kinds of black shirts around. You've chased some of those loose balls down. That ball just won't bounce to you, will it? I've also dropped a few of them. Well, it's a nervous time. This is what you want. See, they fake it to the fullback. Don't give it to him, and that's a great play defensively. Get your hand on the ball. He's hanging it out there, and now it's just a scramble for the thing. And, and you know the thing about a football, if they made the thing round, it just wouldn't be any fun because you'd know which way it was going. But look at everybody diving on it. That's a nice play by number 63. Is Nick, uh, Eric Pope. 63, Eric Pope. Nice play. Play. He recovered it the way you want to recover it. Get it into the belly and hold on to it. But the loss all the way back to the Oklahoma 48. Third and long. There's Jackson, the tight end. Did he hold on? I don't know who has 
gets it. He and McMillan fight for it, and they're going to give it to the Sooners. Are he and Floyd fighting for it? That was a fine throw from Holloway into the wind. Jackson was open all the way. Number 88 is the leading receiver on this team coming in. He had 12 catches for 291 yards, and Missouri should have been on him here. They left it up to the safety. He's got it right there. And now Floyd's only got one hand to wrestle it away from a guy who was 241 pounds, and he's just not going to get it. Missouri had him right where they wanted, and they let him off the hook. On third and 20, they picked up 32. They're not supposed to be able to do that. Shapura very quickly up defensively to make the stop on Tillman. He got some help from Daryl Darling, the freshman nose tackle. Missouri plays about 15 freshmen at one time or another out of their 22 starters. And... That does not mean good things for this season, but it certainly does for the road ahead. The only thing you can do when your program is down, you've got to take those young kids and teach them and give them the experience. Pickup of a couple. Whistles blow, flags fly, and they'll stop it before it gets started. The Sooners with a 10-0 lead, a 9.53 left in the first half. And that'll cost the Sooners five more, so they're doing their best to help the Missouri defense on this particular series. Well, the defense has done well. The Tiger defense has played well. They're getting the turnovers. They're getting them to drop the ball. They're getting the ball loose. A couple have gotten loose, and they haven't fallen on them, too, that I can remember. Uh, but they are dropping the ball, so Missouri's doing the job. What they need to do is hold them here and sustain a little bit of offense, and we've got a ball game. That recovery by Pope was so big because he got it at the Sooner 48, and Missouri would have had it in Oklahoma territory. Second and 13, Holloway's going to throw it again. Wide open is Lee Morris in the end zone, and he holds on for the touchdown. Well, they beat him that series with the pass. Into the win. 24-yard strike from Holloway on the heels of a 32-yard completion. Well, again, it's second and long here, and what he does, Holloway checks off. He's looking to the left, and then he goes back to your right as you watch it. What a perfect pass. What a perfect pass. Anytime you run play action, out of the wishbone, you've got to have a receiver open. You have to respect the run first. Fullback gets nailed by Walker, but it's too late because your linebackers are up involved in that run, and this is the result, the touchdown and the extra point. And Lasher tacks on the conversion. Now how big was that fumble recovery by Eric Pope? It saves the Sooners' possession and gets them a touchdown. 9.38 left in the half. Oklahoma 17, Missouri nothing. We'll be back after this. There is Jamel Holloway talking to Barry Switzer, telling Barry, let me throw the ball. He just completed two passes, one of 32 yards on a third and long, and a touchdown toss to Morris of 24 yards. That puts Oklahoma ahead 17-0, and again, they recovered their own fumble. They've done that twice, and it's led to two touchdowns. And that's really the difference so far as Lammer takes it on the run for Missouri, and he's tripped up as he gets near the 30 for the Sooners. That time, Jeff Hake, number 47, down there to help trip him up. They talked about Troy Aikman being the passer, and he certainly was the passer for Oklahoma, an excellent passer. He's down. But Jamel Holloway had two touchdowns. He had one in all the time that they had played. Holloway had thrown for more touchdowns, and that's probably because he runs the ball so well he gets those wide open receivers. Joe Close down on the field. Pretty good tight end. He's been injured this year, Kevin. Had, had a knee problem, and it's uh, bad to see that uh, on a special teams play where he's down again. They'll take a look at him. That's the Oklahoma touchdown drive, but what you don't see there is the big fumble recovery by Eric Pope back at his own 48-yard line and the 32-yard pass that set up the touchdown throw. That's been two, two fumbles by Oklahoma, both recovered by the Sooners that really have been the difference in the game. Uh, Missouri getting them to drop the ball, but Oklahoma's picking it up themselves, and when they do, they did it at the other end for a first down, they did it there, and then came up with a big pass play, and, and that really is the difference. Well, they're helping Joe close off the junior out of Springfield, Missouri. And it's not good to see that. Tigers will start from their own 29, and they need some points now. Michael Scott in there at fullback, along with Daryl Wallace at the tailback spot. They bump into each other, Scott and Sites do, and now they're in trouble. 
Reed was there to make sure Seitz didn't get away, and those are the kind of execution mistakes that have plagued Missouri, and they can't afford to make them at this point. They tell us from the sideline that the injury to Joe Post is his ankle. Well, remember, Scott is a converted defensive tackle, and what you gain in size and speed, 270 pounds and a 4840, you're going to lose because of things like that. He's not all that clear on where he had to go on that play. Loss of the yard, second and 11. Dick Shapura, by the way, you saw him helped off the field earlier, has bruised ribs, and he's already returned to the Missouri defensive lineup. Knight's going to throw it. Incomplete flags are flying. It was intended for Thetford. But that will probably work against Oklahoma. Thetford, an excellent receiver. Lammers on the near side of the field had run kind of a hook pattern deep, and he was wide open. Sites never looked at him. Pass interference against the Sooners. Was that Kevin Murphy that was defending? Let's take another look. This is Lammers. This is Lammers on the near sideline. He gets into the zone. Look at this. And he's, he's wide open. Now, Seitz, he wants to go to Thetford all the way on a drag pattern. Pretty good pass. And interference on Oklahoma. Dante Jones. But look at Kevin Murphy coming to the picture. He was well back in coverage that time. Well, defensively, as a linebacker, what you want to do is you want to keep everything in front of you. You just keep dropping until somebody crosses in front of you. When they do cross, then you go get them. That's how you play zone. Just keep dropping. If nothing ever shows, you get as deep as you can. So the penalty is a five-yard penalty and gives Missouri a first down at their own 32-yard line. And they'll run Wallace trying to get to the outside. He's quick if he gets room. But he didn't get the room, but still was able to pick up some yardage on that play. And out there to make the tackle very quickly was Scott Garl, the freshman from Hominy, Oklahoma. I like that play with Scott running interference out of the fullback position on the corners. I think it really, it works better on the corners because it's harder to stack them up. If he takes them inside, Wallace can go outside and vice versa. And I think Missouri needs to keep running the ball. They need to establish that running game if they're going to have anything go for him in the air. He got about five. It'll be second and five for the Tigers. Sights straight back. Here comes the rush. He throws into it. Great catch. Cutting across by Johnson. He's loose at the 40. June Bug Johnson knocked out of bounds inside the Oklahoma 30. And no flag flies. And the Sooners are fortunate as Derek White threw him down. Five, eight yards out of bounds. A big play for the Tigers. June Bug is slapping five, but I'll give it to Warren Sights. Look at this pass by Sights with a man right in his face. Over the linebacker. Hit him right in the hands. And now it's June Bug's turn. He's, you know, don't get to run in the defensive secondary of Oklahoma too often. you got to make the most of it. I don't think the boos are really warranted. He kind of carried him out of bounds. He didn't really throw him down. That was momentum more than anything. Good play by Missouri. 37 yards. That was Steve Bryan, the unheralded right defensive tackle for the Sooners that was in the face of Warren Sites. Biggest play of the game for Missouri. And here's Wallace straight up the middle. Tried to make a cut, and his own turf victimized him that time. <laughs> and you see his reaction. Look at his shoes. We had a shot of his shoes there. He's got the, the tape on the shoes. That tape goes all the way under the shoes. And I never really thought, well, no, see, that wrong shoes there, guys. But the, see, on some of these guys, they, they have that white stuff on the side of the shoes. Goes all the way around the bottom of the shoes. And that'll cost you some footing. I never did that myself. I, uh... In fact, I didn't wear shoes. Not that I you think. needed all the help you could get, right? <laughs> Second and four. Sites in trouble. He's got a man, and he completes it to Essen inside the 10. Eddie Essen, the Missouri fullback, sneaking out of the backfield. And that'll be a Missouri first down. What Sites did, he went to the corner. He put some pressure on that defense when he got outside. You got to make a decision. Come up or go back. Sites unloaded the ball, and he got he made the play. See, once he gets outside the coverage, here comes the linebacker, Reed. Now, maybe he should be in coverage, but somebody's got to chase Sites. Warren does the right thing. He tosses it to Essen, and Essen heads for the goal line. First and goal, Missouri at the Oklahoma 8. Wallace. Cuts inside and gets inside the five-yard line. A great cut from Wallace that time to enable him to penetrate, but Bosworth was there to make the stop for Oklahoma. When Bosworth's in your way, you're probably not going to get to the goal line. 
is where Michael Scott will really come in handy. 270 pounder in the backfield. You've been watching the Bears, William Perry, because Scott's just a baby compared to Perry, but the, the idea is really the same. You get that guy going, if he can get off the mark quick and get him into a hole, he can create some damage in that defense. He's in there right now. Big number 99, 270 pounds, second and goal from the four. Essen in motion. Well, that play just looks strange all the way, and flags fly, and if that costs Missouri five, that's a delay of game penalty that just kills you when you're down close. And that's what the Tigers have been victimized by here. This Sooner defense, so potent and powerful on its own, is gracious to get help like that. We saw him against Nebraska. They literally hiked the game away, snapped it away with drop snaps. Young teams will have this problem. It's, it's just got to be demoralizing for Woody and the rest of the guys, but it does happen when you have a bunch of young kids in there and you're playing against one of the top-ranked teams in the nation. Vernon Boyd replaces Wallace at the tailback spot. Second and goal now from the nine. Sight's going to throw the ball. Has time. Now gets the nervous feet. Hey, he might have a touchdown. The Sooners closed the gap in a hurry, and I mean in a hurry. Great defensive work that time from Scott Garl. He had a picket line over there. He did have room. Now, this is a good job by Sites, except for the end of the play. It's great coverage, terrific block on the corner, a double team. He just doesn't have anybody open, so he pulls it down. Now, he's 6'4". He's got to lower his head right there, turn it upfield, but he doesn't. Too much hip action. He stands straight up. He gets no yardage. You've got to take your lumps, Warren. You've got to turn it upfield, put your head down a foot off the ground, and go for those three or four yards. They're important yards. Especially here, third and goal from the six. Sights under pressure now. Flags flying. And Bosworth collars him as he gets inside the five. Well, Missouri's only hope is that that penalty works against Oklahoma. Bosworth, lucky he didn't get a penalty call. He took a shot at Sites' head when he went down there, and there was no flag on it. Missouri will get the illegal procedure penalty again. So they move the football all the way to the four-yard line, and then penalty set them back. Bosworth, you see him in the screen, number 44, a little bit shaken up on that play. It seems to be, it, it has been the story of the Missouri team. Key penalties, mistakes at the wrong time. They're really a pretty good football team, although they're one and seven on the year. They, they've been in most of the games. They just seem to shoot themselves in the foot. I saw Bosworth yesterday at practice. Got one of those little curls down at the end of the back of his haircut. And uh, I was going to tell him it looked silly, but I thought better of it. <laughs> Tom Wellahan on for Missouri to attempt the field goal. It'll be a 21-yard attempt. He's one of two from this distance. Switzer was saying, watch out for the fake. He gets it off, and he boots it through there. So Missouri, with much-needed points, although they would have liked to have had seven, they come away with three. 5-0-1 remaining in the half. Oklahoma still on top. But now it's 17-3. We'll return after these words from Brack and Decker, M47 Series Power Tools. Tom Wellahan trying to get the crowd into it as Missouri gets on the scoreboard with a 21-yard field goal. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. 5-0-1 remaining in the first half. 17-3 Oklahoma. Now, Kevin, it's exactly the two fumbles that Oklahoma made and recovered their own that led to two touchdowns that is the sole difference in this game. Big drive for Missouri. They proved to themselves they could move the ball on this team. They did get three points. Uh, they're really a touchdown away from being very, very much in this game. Collins and Perry deep for Oklahoma. Wellahan with the wind at his back. There won't be any returning the football from that end of the stadium today on kickoff. So the Sooners will start from their own 20. Wellahan does his job, kicks the field goal, then kicks off for a touchback. And Missouri's defense has to think turnover now with 5-0-1 remaining in the first half, and the Sooners at their own 20. the first half of today's Big 8 game has been brought to you by Coors and Coors Light. Beers with a difference worth tasting. We're live from Faro Field in Columbia, Missouri, a place that's been difficult on Oklahoma. They've lost the last two times in here, and Leon Perry only gains a couple. 
as he goes over the left side of that Missouri defense. Walker was there, number 40, defensively for the Tigers, along with Lachey, who's in there now for Missouri defensively. Missouri defense has to feel a little better now with a couple of points, three to be exact, on the board. And what they have to do now is what we've been saying all day. Against the wishbone, against Oklahoma, who will turn the ball over, stop the fullback, and then everybody after the quarterback and the pitch man, you've got to grab those arms, go for the ball, try to get them to turn it over. Holloway's fumbled three times, and here he comes. They've recovered two of them, but he's hurt them with the big play. And they did just what you said. Everybody grabbed him, and they went for the ball, but he held on that time, and he picked up another first down. It's been his running. That has killed Missouri so far. That kid's special, number four. He's a special player. He's not just a wishbone quarterback. He has, seems to have great resilience. He gets out on the outside. Very tough to get a good shot at him. Nine plays, 67 yards for Missouri. That was a good drive. The big play, remember, 37 yards to Junebug Johnson right in the middle. Great pass by Seitz. They should maybe have had six, but they did get three. Holloway's going to throw it again. Now he's in trouble. Hit as he throws. That one's up for grabs. And Jackson's the bigger of the two, and he outleaps Floyd for the catch at the Missouri 26. Well, there's no reason for that. That ball was in the air forever, forever. Floyd had plenty of time to react, and he should have been there. Jackson does a great job. He's got great hands, this guy. He's a big one, too. 6'3", 241, just a sophomore. Oklahoma doesn't throw the ball much, but he's got two big catches today. That gives him 14 on the year. 40-yard pass play for Oklahoma. Holloway has burned the Tigers. A 32-yard pass to Jackson, now a 40-yarder, and he threw a 24-yard touchdown pass to Morris. Big play for Oklahoma, and they have a first down at the Missouri 26. And there goes Carr right up the middle. Shapura riding his back. He got a lot of help. Lachey had him around the ankles, and Buck Stinson had him around the shoulders also. Pickup of two for Carr. Carr has added 15 pounds in the offseason. I guess it's an old 15 pounds now. He's been playing a few games this year. But he's a lot stronger, a lot better player. That wishbone fullback has to be a strong kick. Take a lot of punishment. Second down, Holloway tries to get to the corner, and he really got stood up that time. Lachey was there. And a lot of black jerseys surrounding him. Buck Stinson again in on the play. And Walker, as he has been on that corner, doing a pretty good job. That's really how you stop the wishbone. Remember, the runners on the wishbone are really pretty much naked. They don't have a lot of blocking in front of them. And what you've got to do is you've got to just shut them down one, two, three. And when you get a shot at them, you've got to take it. Try to pop it loose. Pop it loose. That's what you're talking about in the huddle all the time. Big play for Missouri, third and six, because it would be a difficult field goal into the wind. They're going to throw it. The receiver fell down. Morris was trying to make his cut to the corner and he slipped and fell and Holloway had no choice. All those complaints about the turf, maybe. Certainly came into play there if indeed that was the reason for him slipping. Now, Lasher's going to attempt the field goal and he'll spot it down at about the 29, which would make it a 39-yard attempt into a very strong win. And he's going to have to earn this one. He's two of three from this distance. He's trying to cheat a yard and put it at the 28, and that's only a six-yard snap back. If there is such a thing as momentum in a game, this is a big field goal. Even though they lead by 14, Missouri got the last score. This is blockable. They're taking a shorter snap. He got it off, and I mean he nailed it. Give the credit there to Lasher. Into the wind, and Oklahoma tacks three more on. And it's a 20 to 3 Sooner lead with two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Hey, remember the 85 Big 8 conference season beginning to wind down in football, but you can catch a full slate of action next weekend. Four league games. That's an indication how strong this wind was blowing in the face of Lasher. Getting back to the schedule, the Battle of the Wishbones in Norman, Oklahoma, Colorado goes to, against the Sooners. And other games, including Iowa State at Kansas State, Oklahoma State at Missouri, and Kansas at Nebraska. Make sure you catch the excitement of Big 8 football by attending a game in your area. That's our score. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. Glad you could join us on our Big 8 Raycom telecast here this afternoon. Missouri faces a really tough challenge now. 
They'd like to get some more points, obviously, in the second quarter, but they're going up against the nation's top defense. This, this is a tough defensive team. If they're going to get up and down the field, they know they're going to have to throw the ball. Oklahoma knows it. And uh, that really speaks for itself. Barry knows it. For sledding, when the defense has an idea what you're going to do. The games for Barry Switzer and Columbia have normally not been one-sided. Missouri losing 24-22, 28-27, 21-17, and they won the last two. Another short kickoff by Thompson, fielded by Clark, and he can't get away at the 20-yard line as he's dropped in his tracks by Jeff Hake, who has been playing very well on kick coverage for Oklahoma. Here's the classic example of taking what they give you. Now, the Oklahoma will play a little bit loose with 2.25 to go in the half. They've got a 17-point lead. They're going to play a little loose defensively, and that means what Missouri's going to need to do maybe is go underneath, throw those backs, quick routes, try to complete that short pass and get up the field. Side setting up the screen to the outside, and he hits John Red. He's across the 25 to about the 27-yard line before he's dropped. John Red's a good player, kind of low-key. Haven't heard much from him this year, but he was the leading rusher last year, and he's very quick. Runs about a 4-5-40, which is pretty big for a guy 200, pretty fast for a guy 207 pounds. Comes from Mayfield, Kentucky, and the screen play's a good call there because it gives you a chance for big yardage, but it's low percentage of errors. Second and five for Missouri. They run the ball with Red straight up the middle. Murphy has a handle on him. So does Casillas. Tony Casillas causes so many problems for the defense or for the offense of, uh, of any team, uh, Missouri today. What he does is he, he needs to be double teamed. You just can't block him one-on-one. -on -one, and then if you double and triple team him, as I said in that Chalk Talk segment, it leaves the linebackers free. If they're free and they're all great players, uh, you've got mismatches all over the field. The defense uh, generally can play very well. Third and three, sights to the air. He guns it complete. Adrian McBride at the 41, runs in a circle, and then Bosworth collars him along with White. That's a Missouri first down. Adrian McBride welcoming himself back. There's a young Tiger fan, doesn't really care for all that shaking. McBride, good receiver, had a collarbone injury earlier. Does a great thing here. He comes back for this ball. True receivers will do this. Little hook up, and now watch him come back. Comes back about two yards. Oklahoma defender trying to get his hands on it, then circles around, picks up enough for the first down. That's just excellent execution by McBride and Sites. They really lost McBride a lot when they lost him, I should say, because he was a leader on this football team when he went down. And this is his first game back in the lineup, the senior out of Zanesville, Ohio. And they've had to make do without him. Tough for a kid when he's a senior. You look so, for so much forward to your senior year playing, and when you get an injury and you lose that many games, the one thing you can never get back when you're in college is, is games lost. Uh, it's If you're a football player, you want to play, and when you start losing three, four, five games uh, here and uh, a knee or, or something and a year goes by, you just never can, never can get them back. A guy who's quietly gone about his business this afternoon from Missouri is the right tackle, John Clay, the junior out of St. Louis. They talk about him in Outland Trophy tones and Lombardi Award tones, but they don't hear much about him. He just quietly keeps his man right where he is all day long. He's the big right tackle, number 77 for Missouri, and they won't beat him off. First down for Missouri, sights to the air. Down the middle he goes, a tremendous play and an interception. David Vickers, the sophomore, went up with one hand and brought it down, and Lammers was wide open behind him. Lammers was open, and June Bug Johnson was running straight down the field, 40 yards upfield. Now, Seitz looking. He has the time. Great job by the offensive line. That ball thrown behind him, and you're right. That's just a great interception. And to the right, June Bug Johnson way down the field and open. Vickers, nice play for Oklahoma, but that's why they're number one. 101 remaining in the half, and you don't get the feeling that Oklahoma would sit on it. And they come out without the wishbone, and that probably means they'll throw it. Holloway in trouble, slips it under to Jackson, the tight end. He's going to get good yardage here, and he's knocked out of bounds. Good thing, too, because he was off to the races if they don't knock him out of bounds. And Eric McMillan, the sophomore out of Silver Springs, Maryland, did the job.
It's a drag pattern by Jackson coming across the field. And uh, Oklahoma, when they split that wishbone defensively, you've got a mindset on the wishbone. All of a sudden, you're looking at something different. It does create confusion for the defense. Missouri needs to be very careful here. They can't allow another score with 54 seconds left in the half. Holloway, who's hurt them through the air. Shapura chasing him out of there. Now he guns it and incomplete, and wisely so. Flag goes down. I believe Vandegrift hit Holloway late out of bounds at the Sooner bench. Tigers don't need that personal foul on Vandegrift. You're right, Kev. Tigers just don't need that. Again, the reaction, the, the ability of this kid is awesome. You see the end of the play. And now we get a little drive. Actually, Vandergriff had some help there, didn't he? He sure did. I couldn't see who That's it was. Looked Clomen. like Scott Vollett, maybe, 92. Or was it Cloman? It was Vollett or Cloman, somebody with a nine on his shirt. This is a big one, 15 yards down almost to the 30-yard line. And now you start thinking about Lasher. With that strong kick he showed us into the wind a few minutes ago, he's in range just about now. With 46 seconds left, though, they're thinking touchdown. There goes Joe Close after injuring that ankle again. And that's a tough break for him. He just got back into the lineup. Holloway. Sidearms and completes it. I mean, he sidearmed that ball, and Damon Stepp made the catch. He was getting pounded by Cloman as he threw that ball, and it was, and you know, Barry Switzer said this to me before the game. He said, this guy's a good passer. We don't throw the ball, but he can really throw. Not only can he run, Cloman on the backside just, just nails him from the backside. Watch this play. Boom. And this thing's on the money, folks. With Cloman hanging all over him, and Stell makes the catch all the way down to the Missouri 17. There you see what the Sooners have done. Look at that taking over at their own seven and very quickly he had to be quick though to see what Missouri did. There it is. There we go. They've not had good field position. But they've not moved the ball all that often either. They had one good drive. But it's been the play of Holloway more than anything else. Not only running the ball but He's really demonstrated what Barry Switzer told you before the game, that he can throw the ball, and he's thrown it well for 123 yards and only five completions. Well, Holloway has made the difference in the Oklahoma offense for the last three weeks. He's, he is doing it today. Kevin, you're right. 36 seconds left in the half. Oklahoma was second in issue. They'll throw. And I believe that ball may have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. It was intended again for Damon Stell. Always had not only are the Sooners deep in the running back spot, but they're very young. Just about everyone, a freshman or a sophomore back there. Poor Spencer Tillman. He got injured in the first game. He's a junior, and he has had trouble getting back into the lineup. A guy of his talent. Think about two years, two or three years down the road with these guys. Third and inches for the Sooners. They had trouble. Perry. Misconnections. With Holloway on the handoff, but I think he knocked him forward for the first down. This thing was, I think it was supposed to be a counter. Very difficult to tell. Holloway never even looking at the fullback. The fullback thinking he's supposed to get the ball, and that's the result. Just a mess. That was uh, Carr, Leon Perry. Uh, thinking he was going to get it, and he did get it, but he got it from the Missouri defense. And Coleman took care of uh, Holloway. They're going to measure for it to see if he did fall full, far enough. Looks like they're a few inches, about an inch or two short. And it's fourth down now. Well, they had second in inches, and now they're looking at fourth in inches. Barry should have these problems every week. Leading yeah. 20, 20 to 3, what should I do? Should I get three more or go for seven? I think he's got a timeout problem. Uh, if, he go, if he tries to run for the first down, does he have another timeout? What's our timeout? Situation? They've still got one left. Well, he's going to have to use it. If he runs the ball, he's got to use the timeout. With 27 seconds left, it gets sticky down here. And now Missouri calls a timeout. 
and they'll talk about it defensively. Well, if he runs for the first down, of course, the clock will keep going, and they wouldn't be able to get a field goal off unless they could stop the clock with either the timeout, or they may try one throw to the end zone after the timeout. You just don't know. I know this. One more touchdown. This game's out of reach. If you get into 27 to 3 at the half against this defense, I don't believe Missouri. I believe at 20 to 3, Missouri has a shot, but I don't believe at 27 to 3, they'd have to come out and midway in the third quarter, they'd have to go exclusively to the passing game. And if they did that with uh, Oklahoma's defense as strong as they are, they'd, they'd be apt to make a few mistakes with the help of the Sooners. So, so this is really pretty, pretty big down here. We mentioned how difficult a time Oklahoma has coming in here, and I mentioned earlier that 28-27 game back in 1975, 10 years ago here on this field. Oklahoma took a 20 to nothing lead in the locker room at halftime. All Missouri did was come back and take the lead, 27-20, and on a fourth down play, Joe Washington broke at 60-some yards for a touchdown. They got the two-point conversion and won the game. And it was on a wishbone play as Oklahoma gets the first down. Steve Davis pitched the ball, and he said later he was just thinking about getting the first down and keeping it. He pitched it, and they won the game on it. There have been a few good ones out here. Holloway with the first down, and now the clock runs. And they'll try to get it stopped real quick, but Shepard's going to catch that inbound. His forward motion being stopped inbounds, and the clock with 10 seconds left. Now, why are they stopping the clock? Oklahoma must have had another timeout left. Well, my question is, why are they not going into the end zone with this? If they, if they work to get a first down, and a shot at the end zone, why don't they throw it into the end zone? What good is this play? A little hook to Shepard. He's not going out of bounds with it. He's, he's five yards from the sideline. It just seems to me that the, their play selection might have been a little better. Well, maybe they glanced at the same scoreboard we looked at and saw no timeouts left, but they did have one, apparently. They should be smarter than we are. Yeah, they should know. Well, at any so rate. they're at the 11-yard line, and it's a, it'll be a second-down situation with 10 seconds left, and they may take one more stab at it and throw into the end zone. And I'm sure they will, because you could certainly, unless Holloway is forced to scramble, get a playoff into the end zone with less than 10 seconds. Second down with 10 seconds remaining. Holloway very quickly lofting it to the corner. Fascinelli chasing over there with Morris. And they overthrow it with six seconds left. We'll see Lasher. He's already kicked two field goals. He'll try to add on his third. Last game we televised here from Perot Field against Nebraska. We made Dale Klein a national here. All he did was kick seven out of seven field goals for the Cornhuskers. Well, the Missouri defense made him look well it might have made him into an all-american uh, the missouri defense bent bent but when it came down to it nebraska had trouble getting into the end zone and we did have a lot of field goal attempts in that game nobody before had ever kicked seven out of seven in the history of college football lasher has it up there and it looks good and it is so with three seconds left he tacks on a 28-yard field goal and missouri trails by 20 23 to 3. Well, the same situation that was here 10 years ago, as I mentioned. A 20-point deficit, they'll take into the locker room at halftime, and they'll need the same kind of miracle against the Sooners in the second half that they put up here back in 1975. An odd game to this, to this point. It's kind, of a, it's kind of tough to get the flow of the game. It appears that, as you watch the game, that the Missouri defense is doing a pretty good job, and yet they're down 20 points. The big play is just killing them. They've shut down the wishbone pretty well. The passing attack, and these, uh, although they've been completed, a couple of those passes were thrown up for grabs. Missouri just couldn't make the play, and Oklahoma uh, converted them into first downs, and in one case, I believe, a touchdown. Uh, so, I don't know, it's kind of hard to get the feel of it. The Missouri offense, the last time they had the ball, moved it pretty well, and yet they're down by just about three touchdowns. Don't forget at halftime, we'll have highlights. We'll have all of the statistical numbers from the first half. A visit to each campus. We'll listen to the Missouri Band. And our greatest of the great features Tim Van Gelder, former cohort of mine. We work together. Former great quarterback at Iowa State. Still holds a lot of the records up in Ames, Iowa. So you'll hear from Tim Van Gelder at halftime. The kickoff kills the clock here for the first half of this one. And Missouri has to regroup as they head into the locker room. 
They trail Oklahoma 23 to 3. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. We're back here at halftime in Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri, Oklahoma, with a 20 point lead over the Missouri Tigers. And some big plays have broken the backs of the Tiger defense and an inability to recover Oklahoma fumbles has hurt the Missouri cause on two different occasions. Jamel Holloway the freshman quarterback for Oklahoma fumbled and Oklahoma able to recover and sustain a drive that led to touchdowns on both occasions. And yeah, we could we could stand here all day and say that uh, Missouri has had the bad breaks and Oklahoma has had some good breaks but great teams nationally ranked teams with number one defenses generally make make good breaks for themselves. I do feel that Missouri defensively has not played badly. I think they're playing uh, almost as well as they did against Nebraska but things have not gone their way and uh, their offense hasn't put a whole lot of points on the board and that's really it's a problem. Jamel Holloway has hurt the Tigers not only with his running but the passing arms. Does that surprise you a little bit? Well Barry kept saying this kid can pass this kid can pass. I think a couple of the passes that he completed were up for grabs and uh, Jackson particularly the tight end of Radiate, 8 has done an excellent job going up and getting the ball and the Missouri defenders maybe could have gotten up there a little higher and, and gotten the ball but but again it comes down to if you have great players and Oklahoma has great players uh, they will make big plays for you when the balls up for grabs are on the ground they're going to come up with it and that's what's happening. All right now you're Missouri you go into the locker room you're down 20 points you won't even have the ball in the opening kickoff you have to stop Oklahoma one more time you might be down more than 20 when you get it back what do you do. Well, yeah, they have the same problem they had before the game, only now they're down 20 points. So if that gives you any idea, they're going up against that great defense, the wishbone offense. You've got to take chances. Uh, offensively, you've got to throw the ball probably on first down. It's not a whole lot you can do when a defense reacts as well as Oklahoma does. You need some breaks. You've got to get in the end zone. If you can just tighten it up a little bit, then maybe they'll tighten up a little bit. Defensively, uh, as always against the wishbone, you have to take chances. They have to hope they don't complete passes, come up, pop, go after the ball, try to get some turnovers. Maybe the defense has to score a touchdown. That would get him back in the game. All right, the sun trying to poke through the overcast skies here in Columbia, Missouri, and we're at halftime of our ball game between Oklahoma and Missouri with the Sooners on top 23-3, to and we'll return to Faroe Field for all of the halftime festivities after you see this. The team's returning to the field here on Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. Those are the Missouri Tigers, and they have their work cut out for them down 20 points here at the half. And the tail of the tape from the first half is going to show you that Jamel Holloway has had one spectacular first half for Oklahoma. The first down's a fairly meaningless number there. But it's the domination of that Oklahoma wishbone in the rushing department that really tells you somewhat of what's happened here in the first half. They've run up and down the field, but the rushing yardage haven't, hasn't really gotten them into the end zone. It's been the pass. And Holloway has thrown for 126. He's rushed for over 100. So he's had a spectacular first half. He had 117 yards rushing all by himself, and the total yardage story is almost 2-1. to one. Well, he got a surprise from Missouri. 153 yards would average out to 306 yards, but this is the real surprise. Oklahoma, one turn turnover. Although they had three fumbles, they got two of them back, and that's really been the story. Missouri has had bad luck with their turnovers. Oklahoma has been able to get theirs back, and that turned the game around. And it's a 20-point lead for Barry Switzer and Woody Wittenhofer needs to rally his team as they begin the second half here this afternoon. We'll take a look at the scoreboard as we pass some scores on to you. I want to congratulate, if we have a moment here, some academic All-Americans here at the University of Missouri that were honored prior to the game in baseball, Dave Otto and Nick Rollo, and in track, Andrea Fisher. Our congratulations to those folks. And you look at the scoreboard down on the ACC, Clemson getting beat early. That's a surprise. North Carolina not expected to beat Clemson, but it's in the first quarter. That's no surprise. Ohio State, yeah, they're expected to beat Northwestern. Michigan and Purdue is a battle. Purdue has a very high-powered offense. Again, Michigan, the great defense. There is Warren Seitz, the Missouri quarterback. He needs a big second half to rally a Missouri past Oklahoma, but the control is with this man, Jamel Holloway. 
He's just had himself a tremendous first half. And remember, he's a freshman. Great poise for a young kid, Holloway, doing a super job. Uh, surprise, uh, people say a little bit surprised. Well, how could he come in and run the Oklahoma wishbone so well? He's a young kid. He's been running the wishbone his whole life. He ran it in high school, at Banning High School in L.A., uh, throughout his high school career. So he's not new with the wishbone. He just has maybe the personnel a little bit better that he's running with. Yeah, he's got some people that he can toss it to that are pretty fine folks in the backfield. Woody Widenhofer looking on. Wellahan getting set to kick off. He'll kick into the wind. And Collins and Perry have dropped deep for Oklahoma. We are underway in the second half. Pretty good kick into the wind. And Collins will return it from his one. This kid is lightning quick. And Missouri corrals him at the 25-yard line. Well, you almost looked for a loose ball there the way he got hit after he was stood up. Got to be careful when you're a running back. When they've got you and you're still standing, the thing about pro running backs and the great ones in college as they get to be upperclassmen is they learn how to dodge those hits and they keep their head down. There's a way to fall. And uh, maybe Patrick, maybe take a class on that. He was standing right up there and he got tattooed. He is just a sophomore. And he stays in the game at that right halfback spot. Here comes Carr on the first play of the second half. Big yardage for Lydell Carr, nearly 10 yards. Eric McMillan rode him out of bounds. But there's the fullback play again. Yeah, number one responsibility. I guess I've been hammering at this all day. Got to get somebody right on Lydell. He goes right off the center guard block. Now he's into the secondary. McMillan's a big guy, but Carr's 215 pounds too, and he's got the momentum. They take him out of bounds, but it's just about a 10-yard gain, a little short of the first down. Not a good omen for your defense when the fullback is untouched until he's 10 yards downfield. And they run him again. He breaks a tackle, gets to the outside, and McMillan helping out along with Ron Floyd and bringing him down shy of the 45, but that's an Oklahoma first down. What he's doing, he's just kind of sliding along the blocks there. Greg Johnson's over there, and and uh, Phillips is over there. And what they're doing, he's just sliding along the blocks till he finds an opening, and, and that really means the offensive line is doing their job. If he can move laterally along his own offensive line like that, it means there's room, and that means they're making the blocks. He picks up eight more yards. His 55 yards of the tough variety. He runs it straight up the gut, and he really pays for it this time. Buck Stinson, the senior out of Norton, Illinois, met him head on. Buck's no, uh, he's no small guy, 232 pounds, and uh, they get the message. Let's stop the fullback, says Buck, and Buck just puts his numbers right in there. Number 57, Walker's number 40. Now, they do a good job here. As you see, Stinson comes in. Walker gets blocked, but Stinson doesn't need any help on that play, and uh, you've got to stop the fullback with the ball or without. You've got to stop him. I know I've said it a lot, but it is the key against the wishbone. Second and nine for the Sooners. They don't like second and nine. How about Walker's play on Holloway? Walker's done a pretty good job on that corner, and Holloway appears to be slow in getting up. Now he's going to get up. I'm sure Barry Switzer took a deep breath. Of course, when you've got a, like, a guy like Eric Mitchell waiting in the wings, uh, it's a short deep breath. Yeah. Well, he's probably surprised, Holloway. He hasn't seen anybody out there. Walker, his responsibility to the pitch man, and Terry Walker's a pretty good player. He moved into the starting lineup about three, four games ago, and he's done a heck of a job. He's just a freshman, not real big, just down the road. He comes from the same school as uh, Steve, Va Steve Vandegrift. Or, excuse me, he doesn't come from the same school. He's in the same class. Here's what's hurt Missouri the pass. Holloway has it intercepted. So Missouri comes up with a big, big turnover. Stan Long, the freshman, one of the many freshmen that Woody Woodenhofer has in the lineup, comes up with a big play. Holloway goes back. He doesn't throw the ball high enough, and Long is just tall enough. Shepard back there looking for a reception, but Long got right in the path. And Holloway just kind of threw it out there. Now, Oklahoma's got to be a little bit careful. You don't want to get complacent in a game like this. Best field position of the day for Missouri. They start at their own 47. Michael Scott is the 270-pound fullback. They call him the freezer here in Columbia. A takeoff, of course, on the refrigerator in Chicago. Wallace heads down fast and skitters his way to the 49-yard line. Milyazo was there. So was Brian and Casillas as always at the bottom of that pile for Oklahoma. Number 92 will go to the NFL right of your screen. 
He sees the guard pull, but see, that's a sucker play there. What they want Casillas to do is follow that guard. He never even looked at the guy. He looked inside immediately. He was looking for a trapper. Instead, he found a ball carrier. That's heads up play by Casillas. Many people compared to him, but he's compared to no one. Sight setting up the screen and does it very well to John Red. He slips, but still gets downfield for some pretty good yardage. And he has a Missouri first down, I believe, at the Oklahoma 43. That play developed very well. Second and long is the screen down. And Red does what I said Sites should do earlier in the game. Remember when Warren Sites, the quarterback, was running the ball and I said he needs to lean and get down low? Watch after this screen play what Red does. He slips a little bit, but now look. He just leans forward. He goes for that first down yard marker, and he makes the defense. He punishes the defense. He makes them pay. And that's what an offensive back should do. And it is a Missouri first down. So they've taken the turnover and moved to a first down in Oklahoma territory. I'm surprised Oklahoma didn't dope out that screen. That was a classic screen down, second and long, and uh, Missouri ran it very well. Even though we're early in the second half, you have to turn this a very key possession for Missouri. They pick up momentum with the turnover, and they're down 20 points and a chance to score. Here comes Bosworth timing that snap, and Sites falls down. I think Bosworth scared him. Well, you got to give it to Bosworth. What he did, he jammed it up immediately, and you know that Sites was thinking about it. 44. He's going to take that big gap between the center and the guard. And Sites just looked like he got tangled up in his own feet, probably figuring he was going to get hit in the back by Bosworth. Bill Petty, the right guard for Missouri, picked it up very well and took Bosworth really right out of the play. Woody just stands there with his arms folded. He's seen a lot of those type of things happen to him in his first year as the head coach here in Columbia. Now you're looking at second down from the 49 after a first down at the 43. So the loss of six, and here comes Casillas. Too high for Junebug Johnson, and Dante Jones drills him anyway. Or Tony Rayburn, I should say, for Oklahoma making the hit. Casillas, you call that a hurry, I guess. That's what they call it. You, you get to the quarterback, make him throw it. What he did... He forced Sites to go to his right, and that meant the defensive backfield could start playing it to that side of the field. As soon as Sites turns, as soon as he does that, the guys on the backside defensively know he has to throw to that side of the field. So here they come. See Bosworth down here on the left? Everybody's going to come to that side of the field, and it lets you react a lot quicker, and you can credit, credit uh, Casillas for that. Third and 16, you saw the third down conversion story. Missouri, two out of six, and Aaron Trevely set the screen up again to red. This one takes a little bit longer to develop, and Oklahoma was ready for it. Well, the blocks were there. Sites threw the ball a little bit too high in the screen. You don't want to let it hang there because it's, an, it's a reaction thing defensively. You want to get it to that back as quick as you can once you decide screen. Let them get upfield with it. Well, Missouri's going to have to do something now. They get the turnover. They move to a first down, and Sites falls down. That's what hurt them. I mean, Adler hung this one up beautifully. Shepard calls for a fair catch inside his five. Now, you can debate the logic of that all day. Like tremendous that speaks, punt for Adler. That's a great punt, and that speaks for itself. Why catch it? The worst you can do is go to the one. Yeah, three yards from where it is. 10 46 left in the third quarter. 23 3 Oklahoma. We'll be back after these words from Bud Light. Give me a light. Field on the campus of the University of Missouri here in Columbia. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. Missouri has Oklahoma hemmed in, and this is where, Kevin, I guess you start looking for the turnover off this wishbone. If it's going to happen, it'll happen here. Oh, and what a hit from Coleman. Rick Coleman, the right defensive end for Missouri, the senior out of ball when Missouri just stood Collins up, and they're fortunate, Oklahoma is, they didn't cough it up. He beats it on the weak side. You'll see him come from the weak side here. Boom! Head to head, defensively. Boy, you love those. Face to face, the look on his face just as he goes down. It's a good one, and you got a good seat for it. He can hurt you. Yeah, here I am. Patrick, I'm Rick. Second and ten now for Oklahoma. Holloway has it and has room. And he gets himself out to first down yardage across the 15. What Holloway did there was he never even optioned it. He faked to the fullback, and then he just took off for the corner. Good block, and here's the whole right side of that Oklahoma line. They take care of the Missouri defense, and in the right of your screen, you'll see Holloway. 
There he comes. Good shot, guys. Holloway, he never even bothered with the option. He just started running. He's got that great speed to pick up the first down. We saw this Oklahoma team against Kansas State, and it's nothing against Troy Aikman, but this Holloway is just a special kind of player. Shapura has a hold of Perry. That ball coughed up, and Missouri has it. Well, we talked about the turnover, and he was really hit hard, Perry was, and then everybody started tackling the ball. Great thing about being down 23-3, to if there is a great thing, is you just unload on these guys. Unload. Get that ball. Look at all the black shirts, and they're after it. One guy holds them up. Everybody else goes for it. And there it is, folks. Drops right on the ground, and Walker's got it. Walker forced it and then pounced on it. A great solo effort from Walker, who is just a freshman out of Jefferson City, Missouri. And now sights in business at the Oklahoma 17. But this is where that Oklahoma defense is so tough. They'll run the ball with Wallace. Nearly fell down, trying to get outside. And he's tackled as he gets to the 15. Good job by Bosworth and Eric Crudup. The sophomore from Delray Beach, Florida. Now, Wallace looked like he had it outside. He made a little hip fake. Looked like he could have taken it outside, but he came right back up inside and picked up two yards. Watch Wallace with the hip fake. Right there, gives him a little leg. But then you see he started outside, he came right back up inside. Looked like he ran right into Fruta. The difference between this Oklahoma team and those great wishbones of the past is this defense. Even with the turnovers, they stiffen on you. Wallace close to the 11, and he's tripped up there by Daryl Reed. They're going right behind Michael Scott, just power football. One of the ways, uh, if you're going to go up against a team that is so powerful as Oklahoma, just match him muscle for muscle. you got a 270-pounder in the backfield. Run behind that guy. And they're going to the right side behind another 270-pounder, and John Clay, the right tackle. It's a lot of beef, a lot of beef in Missouri on that right side, or whatever side they send Scott. That's a lot for a linebacker to handle. Scott is alone back behind Sites. Here comes the blitz. Sites never saw it, and he coughs it up, and Lammers alertly dives on it, but he'll be short of the first down. Too bad that didn't take another five-yard bounce from Missouri. That's what they needed. Watch Scott. They've got Scott on the wrong side here. Scott's the blocker in the backfield. Look at him looking for somebody to block. Behind you, behind you. Oh, oh. Oh, if he had put his hat in Sites' back, which is what a lot of people do, he could have hurt him. David Vickers was the man who came on the safety blitz. The crowd booing the decision to kick the field goal, and it'll be a 27-yarder. I'm looking for a fake here. That's what I'd be doing if I was on Oklahoma. Wellahan, one of two from this distance. He gets this one up, and he's got it. But three points in a situation where you nearly had to come away with seven. Draws the wrath of the crowd here in Pro Field with 7.50 remaining. And Missouri trailing 23 to 6. Live here at Pro Field, 23 to 6 after Missouri tacks on the field. Well, I guess Woody wouldn't offer thinking he wants to keep his team mentally in the game. If they had gone for it on fourth down and didn't make it, well, he could almost write it off. 7.50 left. You know, Nebraska, the favorite to capture the 85 Big 8 Conference women's volleyball title. They'll get together for that championship starting Friday night at Penn Valley Community College in Kansas City, Missouri. Wellahan's kickoff is a loose variety, and it goes into the end zone, and Oklahoma must start from their own 20. Well, each of the two possessions here in the second half for Oklahoma resulting in turnovers. Missouri able to capitalize on only one of those two and only get three at that. As you coach, what you fight with the wishbone is concentration. When you get a big lead, 20-point lead at halftime, you need the great concentration to run the wishbone. Exchanges, holding on to the ball, all those pitches, all that misdirection that goes on in the backfield. You've got to keep your head in the game, and sometimes it's pretty tough when you get a big lead. The Sooners with Holloway in trouble. Now he pitches it to Tillman, who gets to the corner, and that was just great speed by Tillman. It looked like he was stopped because he had to wait for the pitch. It was a great block at the corner, too. They took somebody, took a Missouri player down right at the corner and allowed Tillman to get outside. They had the, they had the, the uh, quarterback covered, and they really had the pitch man covered until that block. Spencer Tillman out with that hamstring tear since the opening game was saying yesterday at practice he really didn't have to stretch it out last week when he came back. But looked like he may have stretched it out there and it held up for him. Picked up five. Holloway keeps it. Has to cut it inside. Missouri is trying to tackle that football again. Buck Stinson was the first man there. 
thing that impresses me about Missouri is they don't have great team speed defensively, but they do react well and get outside, and they cover these wide plays real well. They fake to the fullback. They had him. Now Holloway, who's so quick, look at how Walker gets outside after checking on the fullback and the rest of these guys, Stinson. Uh, they make the play short of the first down. That's good defense. Third and two for the Oklahoma Sooners. Flag fly as he is busted. But we'll wait and see what it's all about. They're going to call this thing, I think, before the play, and I believe it's proce a procedure on the right side of the line for Oklahoma. That's kind of a bad break for Missouri. If they, if they get a choice, it'll be fourth down. They won't get a choice. There's the, the replay you can see. It came from the right side, number 68, Anthony Phillips. But Stinson drilled Carr short of the first down, and now Oklahoma will get another chance. Well, that's what happens when you're on a roll. Yeah, it's a bad break, believe it or not. Uh, a penalty on Oklahoma actually gives him a break. And it'll make it third and seven. And you may see Holloway go to the air. I'll be looking for Jackson here, the tight end. Holloway just may keep it himself. He's going to throw it. Looks outside, and Tillman tripped over his own feet. Don't know if he'd have had a first down because Passanelli was right over there, but one-on-one -on, -one on the open field, Tillman's a tough guy to bring down. You know what they did? They moved Jackson, the tight end, out to wide out, sent him down the field, ran somebody off, and that play is wide open. Jackson, 88, has been killing him all day, so he's the wide out. As he's going to get a defender to go with him out there, and they tried to throw underneath him. And uh, it was a pretty good pass. Even though he fell down, it hit him. Just that he couldn't come up with it. And uh, that's a break for Missouri. Look for a long punt here from Winchester. He's got a strong wind at his back. Here comes Missouri, and they don't get it, but they get him, and the flag comes down. Bon Howry, a senior out of Troy, Ohio, is the man who got him. You got to dive in front of the kicker, in front of him. One guy goes by is no excuse for this. You have to take a line. You have to take an angle that takes you in front of the kicker two or three yards so you don't have that happen to you. And uh, there's just, boy, that's a tough one. So Oklahoma, after a spirited defensive effort by Missouri holding them short, will get the ball back. Depends on what they rule it. If it's a running into the kicker, it'll be a five-yard penalty. Well, they have to call. I can't imagine they'd call out a deliberate roughing. Still no official indication from John McClintock, the referee. And now he's coming up. It's obviously running into the kicker because Barry Switzer doesn't like it. Barry's not smiling much for a guy with a 23 to 6 lead. Well, he maybe remembered two years ago when he came in here and didn't get any points. Yeah, he's got 23 more than he got two years ago. And that'll be the call, and so Oklahoma will have to punt it again. And Boy, if you're Missouri, you, you talk and you say, hey, let's not do that. Now, actually, they're going to take the punt. They're going to decline the penalty. And they'll take the kick because he nailed it pretty well. And that would have made a four, about a fourth and two, and you're right. And I think Missouri would have come right after it again anyway. <laughs> And, and maybe gotten them again the way they were coming that time. So the Tiger offensive team will trot its way back onto the field after a 47-yard punt by Winchester. And defensively, Missouri has done the things they need to do here coming out in the second half. Three possessions for Oklahoma, and they shut them down all three times, come up with two turnovers, but they've only been able to get three points. So the Tigers have it at their own 30-yard line, first down. They're going to need a big play offensively at some point if they're to get back into this one. Sights to the air to Wallace. He fumbles the ball. And Oklahoma will take over at the Missouri 35-yard line. Too bad. It was great offensive blocking. John Clay on Darrell Reed. I mean, he had all day to throw this thing. Hit him right in the chest with it. And then look at the pop. Boom. Ball drops right down on the ground. We saw the thing bounce. We saw the thing bounce all over the place before. Instead, it just falls down and lays there. Oklahoma comes and picks it up. And the great teams, the great hitters, get the good breaks. 
Crudup made the tackle and Miliazzo the recovery and now this wishbone is lethal. Holloway, he may be gone. He's around the right side of the 10. He's going to sprint for it and he gets there. 35 yards for Jamel Holloway. And you sort of saw that one coming after the fumble recovery for the Sooners. When the defense works so hard on the other end and then you have an immediate turnover, it can be so tough. Now, Holloway knows exactly what he wants to do. Great blocking on Walker at the corner. He was his man. No defense out there. And now it's a race between Holloway and McMillan. And Bassanelli and Holloway wins it. Touchdown, Oklahoma. He's just not very fast, is he? No doesn't make decisions very quickly either. When he gets behind you, folks, he Lasher. stays there. Lasher on for the point after. And he tacks it on. So Oklahoma goes up 30 to 6 with 624 left. In the third period, the Sooners having things their own way, and we'll be back after this. El Holloway. Well, you start running out of superlatives when you start talking about him officially a 34-yard touchdown run. He's only rushed for 162 yards so far today. And that's coming up on the heels of such a great week last week, 162 yards. And that was the, the best rushing performance this year by a Sooner. So now he's tied that. He looked fast sitting on the bench. <laughs> Well, it's time to get crazy if you're Oklahoma. I mean, if you're Missouri, <laughs> Oklahoma already got crazy. It's time to get crazy. If you're playing defense, if you're playing offense, it doesn't matter. It's time to let it go and, and have some fun. They have got Holloway deep for the kick from Thompson. And with the wind at his back, not one has been returned, and this one is the same. All the way out of the end zone on the fly. And Missouri will have it on their own 20. Well, it's hard to search for turning points in a 30 to 6 game, but the first two possessions of this second half, when Missouri came up with turnovers on each one and were only able to get three points. They had it at their own 47 on the first turnover, the interception. Then on the Oklahoma fumble, they had it deep in Sooner territory and only got a field goal. Yeah, but you're talking about the best defense in the nation. They are tops in the nation. And uh, it's pretty tough when you're going up against the number one rushing defense, the number five passing defense in the nation to even get a yard, much less 20 yards. It's not only pretty tough, it's been real tough. Seitz, under pressure, somehow gets it to Thetford, but he drops it. Miliazzo is hanging all over. Thetford hooking up there, looking for a quick five yards on first down. Seitz does a nice job on this play. He kind of pumps a couple of times, checks off, and then he's going to hit Thetford, who has company. Pass is good. Little to his left there, as you see, and just a hand in there. Migliazzo just getting in there, getting his hand in there, and that's great defense again. Not the kind of company you want. Miliazzo out of Kansas City, Missouri. That's one thing Woody wouldn't offer stress to us that he's got he's got to keep the Missouri kids here, something Missouri hadn't done in the past few years. That's the kind of guy Missouri would like to see wearing their colors, and he's with the Sooners. Sights on the option, keeping it himself, and he gets a couple of yards. It's a good call. It's a good call in this situation because it has potential for a big play. Uh, Sites, uh, of course, not the quickest guy in the world running the option, but at least it gives Oklahoma something to think about. And Missouri needs a big play, and, and if you're not going to go through the air, the option is, is probably your next best bet. Sites in the past has been a very effective runner on the option. But the Tigers not showing it too much today. 365 for Oklahoma. Third and seven for Missouri. Here they come. Seitz delivers it in a hurry to Lammers, but he'll be hit short of the first down. Good defensive work by Liddell Glenn and Miliazzo on the far side to keep Lammers from getting that first down. And you talk about Missouri, a time to get crazy, but for Oklahoma defensively, a time for that sensational defense to just tee off. To unload, and what they needed to do on that play, Lammers, I mean, it's third down. Lammers has got to hook up at a fourth down yardage. He's got to hook up past the first down. Adler into the wind. Shepard chases it as an own 34. Now he's going to try to jitterbug his way, but ends up with it at the 36 before he's dropped over there. Jensen there to make the tackle. So with 5.03 remaining here at Burrow Field, we're going to take a break. We'll be back to Columbia, Missouri, 30-6, to six, the Sooners. Live in Columbia, Missouri, the Sooners' defensive strategy at work. Boy, what a job they've done this year. Amazing personnel, but... It's one thing to have great personnel and another thing to have it and then execute with it, and they've done exactly that all year. To get them in the right place is a key. Put them in the right position. Holloway's going to add insult to injury. He's throwing deep down the middle for Collins, and it's deflected by Fascinelli. 
Well, you may see some eyebrows raised now on the Missouri sideline. Oklahoma's thinking national ranking here. They want to put the points on the board. I don't know how Missouri could ever stop this play. Second and 10, they run the wishbone combination. Now Collins is open, and this is a pretty good pass, but Fastinelli makes a great effort and almost had a chance to catch that thing. Collins just can't react because the ball is tipped. The one thing about the wishbone that's, that's kind of insidious, when you're ahead, you can't turn it off. Yeah. I mean, the thing will put points on the board, but there's no way to sit on a lead. You saw Fastinelli there. Here's, here's the reverse. They fumble the ball. How about that? He was able to pick it up again. That's just a tremendous alert play by Liddell Glenn. Or Derek Shepard, I should say, coming around on the reverse. Well, they've got athletes at Oklahoma. And they've got, if you, you want reflexes, Oklahoma's got them. <laughs> There's a pitch from about six inches away. Shepard can't handle it the first time. He stops and picks it up, takes off, and almost just about breaks it. Coleman's there, and he drags him down for a loss. Getting back to my point, Fascinelli wearing gloves out there. The ball seemed to skip off his hands. Why wear gloves? It's not cold. It's a confidence thing if you feel better with the gloves you wear. Holloway in trouble, nearly has his head separated. Vandergriff with the big play there. Boy, that's got to make the defense feel good for Missouri to get their hands on that guy in the backfield. They've had a little bit of trouble corralling him all day. Vandergriff, number 32, will be around for many, many years here. The guy's a good player. Fighting off the block, they force him out. The key was the inside forced him outside, so Vandergriff just came off his block and made the play. Grandview, Missouri, he's a good one. 13-yard loss, and Winchester's going to tee it off from his own 10 here. But he's got the wind at his back. And he drives it. A low kick. Takes a Missouri bounce at the 40 and goes straight out of bounds. So Missouri gets it back again at their own 40 with 333 remaining. A 38-yard punt. Kevin Kiley, glad you're with us. Live from Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. A place that has not been friendly to the Oklahoma Sooners in the past, but... Barry Switzer and his gang having things pretty much their own way, leading 30 to 6 with 3.33 left in the third quarter. Watch out for reverses and all sorts of craziness now. They've got to get a big play. Adrian McBride in there in the slot. And here comes the reverse to June Bug Johnson. You, you didn't call that, did you? Boy, did you see Daryl Reed? He's just leaping over people, just, just hoping he can get a shot at cracking somebody. There's no better time to play defense than when you've got a 24-point lead. Everybody on the defense right now is yelling, reverse, reverse, and Junebuck can hear it. Here comes the white shirt. <laughs> Six, seven yards, move to it. There's Daryl. He's airborne. Pickup of seven, but on a reverse, you look for something more like 25 or 30. Not a bad guy to get the, the ball in his hands, Junebug Johnson. Here's Vernon Boyd, and he's not going too far. Dante Jones really hit him, and now Michael Scott's going to get mad. He and Murphy squaring off. Well, Michael's got no case here. The ball was on the ground. Michael picked it up like he was going to run with it, and somebody dropped him, and that's, that's what's supposed to happen. Not so much fun on offense. You can't use your hands on offense. Michael's he's used to using his hands. <laughs> He's used to making those tackles. You know, it's great. They, they left him his number. They, they didn't change his number to a fullback number. They still got 99. I like that. You can't go any higher than that. No, you can't. <laughs> Woody Woodenhofer in his first year here at the University of Missouri. It's been a long one for Woody, but he'll have good ones in the future. Played here in his collegiate days under Dan Devine. Was a roommate of Bill McCartney, who was the head coach at Colorado. Barry Switzer, on the other hand, has had things his own way today, and he has for pretty much of the 13 years that he has been the head coach at Oklahoma. The Missouri timeout on a third and three play. And the Tigers talking it over with Warren Seitz and a pretty disconsolate Missouri bench. I don't know that they expected to win, and, and they really haven't played that badly. You said it. It sounds like a, a, a broken record, but they've got a lot of young people that are going up against a very high-powered team, which I might add has a lot of young people, too. 
the Oklahoma team, but Missouri is rebuilding while Oklahoma has been near the top for years and years, and, and I, I just have a real good feeling about the Tigers. I think they're going to be a good team, and it's, I think it's probably tougher if you think about it through the years. Switzer has got to keep this team on top. The pressure must be unbelievable to keep Oklahoma going 9-2 and 8-3 and 10-1 and, and, and going for national championship. And Woody's got a couple of years to rebuild this team. The pressure eases somewhat when you've got a freshman like Holloway. Sights in deep trouble. Down he goes. And you just don't get away from Bosworth. Sights got to make a better play than that. Sights has got to get rid of the ball. He can't let this guy run him down. To lose that kind of yardage. Here comes Bosworth. has been blitzing all day. He's got a beat on him. Sights knows it. Throw it. Got to get rid of that thing. So Marlon Adler will come on to punt it away into the win and that's not going anywhere. Sonny Brown calls for the fair catch and Oklahoma will have it at their own 43-yard line after a 22-yard punt into the win. It's a vicious win, I'll say that. Notre Dame roaring past Ole Miss in the third quarter. Talk about vicious. And that's a surprise. We're into the second quarter. North Carolina's defense has had their problems, but they're shutting down Clemson, who have had problems on offense. There's a big upset in the making only in the second quarter that Georgia defense I'll tell you they could beat anybody here comes Holloway he pitches it back to Collins he just ran out of field or he might have been off some more scores to pass along to you Ohio State a pretty easy victory so far and uh, what looks like will be a victory Michigan roaring over Purdue that's a little bit of a surprise I was expected to be very close Defensively for Missouri. Here's a good. This is the film on this game. Right about this time of the game, you find out who your players are because you find out who quits, who doesn't, who plays hard, even though the score's out of reach. Perry over the right side gets across midfield, but he's short of the first down. When you're building a football team, and Woody and the rest of the coaches, they'll go in Monday or Tuesday. They'll look at these films, and they'll be talking about next year already. Scores 30 to 6 Oklahoma, and they'll be looking for guys that are just really playing hard, trying to trying to get their job done, and trying to get to the ball carrier, no matter what the score is. And that's how you rebuild programs. In games like this, you really find out a lot about the kids. Third and two for the Sooners. Here they come blitzing. Collins cuts through the opening and gets the first down down to the Missouri 42. Stan Long was there. And he got some help from Eric McMillan. Big hole on the left side for Oklahoma and Collins is just so quick. Vandegrift takes on the man, but he doesn't get any help on the inside. As you see, Walker got blocked. Collins so quick getting into the secondary for a first down. The thing about the wishbone, too, it takes you sideline to sideline all the time, makes you tired defensively. Are you a little bit surprised that Holloway is still running the wishbone? And that Eric Mitchell's not in there because of hits like that by Terry Walker on Holloway. Well, the question here is, does he need experience? Does he need to play? And what are the goals of the Oklahoma team for the season? If, if in fact, uh, this kid is, uh, is going to lead them to a national championship or a Big 8 title or both, birth in the Orange Bowl, whatever their goals are, uh, maybe they feel he needs the work. He's just a freshman, and he really hasn't started the entire year. He's still new to the offense. So maybe they just feel that leaving him in there would be for the benefit of the team. He got five and second and five. Perry straight up the middle in the hands of Walker and Cloman. He gets very close to another first down. It's been a, a tiring day for that Missouri defense, and they played well early and had some breaks that they forced, and the offense just didn't take advantage. There's a guy there that could probably use the rest is Perry. He's getting tattooed on every play. There you go. Slip lock, and then a little cruncher there, and Perry follows it up. Number 75 for Oklahoma is a, is a big dude, and if, if he's pounding on you... He's only 303, slimmed down, Greg Johnson. Yeah, that's our man, 303, Greg Johnson. Holloway on short yardage on third down, sneaks it and has the first down. You know, everybody looks big in a football uniform, but all of a, every once in a while you come across a guy that just looks bigger. He just is so big that the shoulder pads look small on him. They pulled the spot back a little bit. Holloway may not have had it. He looked like he got forward closer to the 31, but they pulled it all the way back behind the 32. So they're going to measure. And he's got it anyway. Oklahoma moving with three seconds left here in the third quarter. And leading 30 to 6 over the Missouri Tigers. They've never trailed. 
They scored the first time they had the ball when Lasher booted a 28-yard field goal, and that got them rolling. And that's the end of the third quarter. The Sooners on top by 24, 30 to 6. And we'll be back to Faro Field after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. We got what it takes. We got what it takes to make it easy. We got what it takes to make it good. There's nothing you can't do when you know your true value. We got what it takes, true value. The more you have to do, the more you really need true value hardware stores and home centers. We got what it takes, true value. Field, the partisan Missouri crowd still smiling even though their Tigers trail 30 to 6. You know, when you look at this performance by Oklahoma and the performances of this team in the last couple of weeks, it really gives you great respect for Vinny Testaverde and the Miami football team, the Hurricanes beating the Sooners. And that's the only blot on the Sooner ledger this year. Walker meeting Perry head on. He got some help from Shapura and Stinson. Perry. Oh, remember they got ahead of him against the wishbone team if you can get ahead uh, it changes the whole complexion of the game as I remember Miami got ahead pretty early in that game and they stayed ahead and, and uh, when they become predictable they have to split down that wishbone you take away the strength of their offense they're doing such a great job against that Oklahoma defense that Miami team's going to be heard from before the season's out throw Just over it if it's tough throw over it just underway here in the fourth quarter. Holloway going for six to Jackson inside the 10. He wants the touchdown, and McMillan drags him down. Well, Jackson has hurt Missouri all day long. It's been wide open, and I got to believe this guy, Holloway, what an arm he has. He's thrown it into the wind here. Play action. He's got plenty of time, as he will. Look at this pass. That thing's just a great pass. Hit him inside there on that post pattern, and Jackson, he's a horse. He's a real horse. 26-yard pickup for Oklahoma. They're threatening to go in again. Telling you, the passing of Holloway, along with the great jitterbug running, has been a big difference today. Tillman can walk in, and he does. That was one of the few legitimate wishbone plays we've seen all day where he just faked and pitched it right away. Holloway never thought about taking it to the corner. He pitched it right out to Tillman. Tillman goal line defense, they, excuse me, kept goal line defense. They're closing on the inside. Remember, you got to stop the fullback. Holloway's caught. Pitched it out to Tillman. There's nobody there. The corner guy got taken down, and he walks in. Second touchdown of the year for Spencer Tillman, and has to make that smile even wider, knowing that he came back from that serious hamstring injury. Then he gets the feel of the end zone again. Lasher on, trying to tack on the 37th Oklahoma point. He does it 37 to 6 the Sooners with 1407 remaining in the in the ball game here in Columbia we'll be back after these words from Budweiser back here in Columbia here's another look at Spencer Tillman's walk from the sideline Holloway right away they go to Holloway he has the presence of mind to pitch it out to Tillman and there's just no way that you can cover the whole field when they execute like that. Tillman, as Kevin said, walks the five yards into the end zone. And Oklahoma, over the years, has walked in a few times against a lot of teams. Holloway's just 5'11 and 175 as you look at Spencer Tillman. And you saw Holloway get kissed by Stan Long. And that's something you always wonder about with the wishbone quarterback. But he's so nifty and so quick, you're usually tackling air with him. Another thing about Holloway was he was recruited by USC and UCLA as a defensive back. They wanted him as a defensive back. Oklahoma got him as a uh, as a quarterback, and that's why he came to Oklahoma. Clark taking that kickoff on the run, getting out to the 34, but a flag thrown in from way across to the near side, and we'll wait and see what that's about. If you can believe this about Holloway again, only two schools, Oklahoma and New Mexico, recruited him as a quarterback. They uh, Others wanted him as a defensive back. The holding call working against Missouri, so that'll move him back a little bit further. It's been a long day for Woody. But he never he never changes. He's all he's been the same uh, gracious man each time we've come to visit. Even though you know inside he's got to be suffering. A man who's been to the Super Bowl four times and won four times just 
doesn't take losses like this without suffering internally. Yeah, well, he came here and this, the program was down. I don't think it's any secret, and he doesn't really talk about it much. The program was down. There's a lot of rebuilding that needs to be done. I think the Missouri fans realize that, and they realize he knows his stuff. Warren Seitz has to throw virtually every down now, and he hits that for the tight end, who in turn gets hit by Miliazzo. All right, if you're playing pass defense now for Oklahoma, you're up a bunch, 31 points. You're in the fourth quarter. You're a linebacker or a defensive back. Chances are you're going to play zone because there's less chance that you get hit for the big play. You play kind of an area defense. Now, the linebackers, they drop, and they keep dropping until somebody crosses in front of them. When somebody crosses in front of them, they stop, and they keep an eye on them. Then it's, then it's go to the ball. Everybody go to the ball. We'll see if we can illustrate that for you. Picked up seven. Sight's in trouble. The ball's loose, and they're going to call it a fumble. And Oklahoma has it. See who gets up off of the pile with it. It appears as though it's number 66, John Phillips. Of course, this makes it simple. Of course, another thing when you're passing the ball, you know they're going to pass. Here comes Bosworth. He's been through all day. Seitz had the ball up there. Bosworth, first he went for the ball, then he went for Seitz. And here come the rest of the Sooners. Clay can't get it. Oklahoma recovers. Another great play by Bosworth. He's had a, a big, big day. So Oklahoma has it at the Missouri 16. Holloway still in there. Damon Stell in there at the right halfback spot. He's throwing for more, and he's got the big guy for the touchdown. So Jackson, who'd been kept out of the end zone all day, finally gets in there. And Holloway has thrown another touchdown pass. Holloway does a great thing for a freshman here. Watch him hesitate until Jackson clears. He wants to throw it right now, but he waits. He waits until Jackson gets in the hole, and then he hits him right in the numbers. At 240 pounds, no match for Fascinelli. He walks in. Keith Jackson. He doesn't even need shoulder bits. A guy can play without a uniform. Just give him a little baseball cap send him out there. Personal foul against Oklahoma after the play that will result in the penalty being marked off on the kickoff. It's a strange one. So Holloway has thrown for a pair of touchdowns. He's rushed for one himself. Just a day at the office for Jamel Holloway, the freshman. Yeah, you really can't say enough about him. He's a freshman. That's incredible. Lasher on for another point after, and Missouri finds themselves trailing 44-6 to with 13-16 remaining. We'll be back to Faro Field in Columbia after this. Back live here at Faro Field, 13-16 remaining in this game. Holloway throwing his second touchdown pass of the game. This one going to Keith Jackson and covering 16 yards. And we talked about the kind of day that Holloway has had, and it's just been a very impressive day for, for a guy. Even if he were a senior, you'd say this is a tremendous day, but he's just a freshman. I think he just broke the single-game record for Oklahoma for total offense. Here's the kickoff for the Sooners. The penalty moving them back to the 25, and they squib it and knock it out of bounds on the far side, and Missouri will get another shot at returning. 44-6 to is the count. Oklahoma. Holloway, as you look at it, setting a new single-game single total offense record at Oklahoma with 324 yards, breaking Jack Mildren's old record of 323 that Mildren set in 1971. So congratulations to Holloway, and I don't think he'll have too much problem being Big 8 Offensive Player of the Week for the second week in a row. They might give it to him for two weeks on this one. <laughs> he could split it up over two weeks and may win it a third week in a row. If I was Missouri, I might have taken that kick. That, that ball was on about the 34 or 5 yard line. How did you grab that one? That's field position. Well, except the fact you're going to move him back five more yards and make him kick from the 20 and kicking into that wind, there are the chances of him getting off any kind of a good kick or, or nil, and when he puts the ball on the ground and doesn't even use the tee, which he did last time, now he's going to tee it up. Well, let's see who was right on this one, Kevin. The, the ball went out of bounds at about the 36-yard line, so we'll see what happens. We'll give him the 36, okay. Wallace is standing at his 31 right now. So even if he gets it there, I bet you nickel he gets five yards. <laughs> Chances are he won't kick it that far. 
Hangs up in the wind. Wallace gathers it in at the 34. I win. He's across the 40, 45, near the 50. Fumbles it. You're right. They should have taken it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we shouldn't be laughing. Woody's not laughing, but uh, I want a nickel. That's, uh, that's important, I guess. Wallace trying for the big play, giving it all he's got. It can happen. He's going to put his head down and head into no man's land. It looked like he coughed it up before anybody hit him. Wallace has had a problem in holding on to the ball in the Kansas State game. He was going in for a touchdown at the one-yard line and lost it, and that cost Missouri the game. And for Woody Woodenhofer, not used to seeing that type of thing, this has to be a very painful experience for him. But he'll have days in the future when he has the smile at the end of the game. And now the Oklahoma Sooners make the quarterback switch. This is Stafford getting around the corner. He's a freshman, and he's inside the Missouri 40-yard line. It'll stretch your defense and keep stretching. And we talked about it before. There's no way to turn this thing off. When a game's out of reach, you can't turn wishbone off, especially when you got Stafford and Mitchell sitting on the bench. They can't wait to get in there and score some touchdowns. It, it's just Missouri's just got to tighten their chin strap, do the best they can defensively, and try to shut this thing down. There's the new quarterback for Oklahoma. And we apologize because we can't identify him. He's not listed anywhere on their roster. And as soon as we do identify him, we'll pass it on to you. I Stafford assume, carries again. Excuse me, I assume that was Mitchell. Evidently, that wasn't Mitchell. Well, across his jersey, it reads Sullivan, and I take take that to mean that that is indeed young Mr. Sullivan. Well, we got a 50-50 chance anyway. <laughs> Don't Glenn Sullivan, we're told, is the new quarterback. Don't have any more information on that for you, whether or not he's a freshman or a senior. But he hasn't played much. But he's going to gain a few yards himself as he gets to the Missouri 30. Anthony Stafford was a highly recruited player out of the St. Louis area. I know Missouri wanted him badly, and he ended up at Oklahoma, impressed Barry Switzer and his staff in the preseason workouts, and you saw why on that run that he circled around the right side on a moment ago. I want to know where you got the Glenn from. I got the Sullivan off his shirt, but where'd you pick up the Glenn? I have contacts <laughs> in high places. <laughs> running everybody in and out of there now just trying to run down the clock as Maloney carries it 11 and a half minutes remaining they call Maloney RT for raw talent I think they ought to call them all RT I guess that means I guess that means he could do just about anything he needs he needs to be a little bit refined although these guys this seems to me they're interchangeable at the 28 yard line of Missouri Sooners on the move already leading 44 to 6. They toss it back to Stafford. Still on his feet. Great balance from Stafford inside the 20. He gets all the way down to the 16 before Floyd knocked him down. But that's power and balance that time. How frustrating it must be for the Missouri defense and Walker, number 40. Watch the play he makes here. Terry Walker, he's the guy that gets his hands on Stafford. Pretty good hit. He's got a shirt. It's a long game. He's been in there the whole time. He can't hang on. And Stafford, he's been resting the whole game. He's headed for Pater. Anthony Stafford, the freshman. It seems like they're all freshmen. Another Oklahoma first down at the Missouri 16. And there he goes up the middle. This time, Cloman hits him as he gets himself inside the 15. Been a long day for Rick Cloman, the senior. Been a long season for all the Missouri seniors and a tough one. Did you check out the weight on Stafford? 5'7", 165 pounds. And he's the guy that just pulled through Walker's tackle a minute ago. That's a lot of power for a little guy. Cloman's 238 pounds, 6'6". So you'd think Stafford would lose that battle also, but he didn't. He doesn't appear to be any worse for wear. Second down and eight. Sullivan's going to keep it himself, and he gets down in a hurry. Walker had him around the ankle. 
Rodney Anderson checking into the Oklahoma backfield now also number 28. A freshman. So I said aren't they all. Third. I don't think you can play unless you're a freshman. <laughs> And they had Spencer Tillman and Earl Johnson returning in the backfield. Lost both of them in the first game. And they just unplug one and plug in another one. Third and five for the Sooners. Sullivan inside the 10. Hanging on as he goes down near first down yardage. Shapura rode him down and he got some help from Coleman. He appears to be short as Sullivan. Sullivan running this option offense very well. I want to know where these guys get practice time. They've got six guys at every position. When do they run? <laughs> Probably run this thing in their room. A little surprising not to see Eric Mitchell, who, of course, battling with Holloway as freshman. Eric Mitchell's starting to think probably it's going to be a long four years on the, yeah, on the right. bench. Fourth and short, Oklahoma will disdain the field goal, and, of course, that would do them no good. Sullivan nearly broke through. Lachey had a hand on him, along with Eric Troy, and then Stan Long put the finishing touch on, but Sullivan got the first down. But the thing about this is, if a kid gets in, now he's a fourth teamer a couple of weeks ago, he's gonna wanna shine, so there's no let up on the offense. These kids, are, they're playing for spots down the road, and they wanna, they wanna play for Oklahoma, so they're playing as hard as they can against a very tired Missouri defense. Here's some other scores, and I think we're gonna have a shocker coming along here in a couple of minutes. Penn State leading, Nebraska leading Iowa State. That one's into the second quarter already. Look at that, there's the shocker. That was supposed to be a good game. Sullivan tossing it back to Stafford. He wants the touchdown, and he gets it. Anthony Stafford with his second touchdown of the season. And with the extra point, Oklahoma. Well, they're on the left hash mark, and that gives them about 35 or 40 yards across the field. They use it all. They get it out to Stafford, and McMillan, all these guys, it's just too far to run. Stafford walks in for another Oklahoma touchdown, and we're on 50 now, 50 to 6 Sooners. The extra point would surpass the 50 mark for the Sooners. Not their best output of the year. They had 59 against Iowa State, but they've got 51 here with 8-12 remaining. The scary thing is that Sullivan ran that wishbone right down the field just like Holloway. A little bit slower, but uh, nonetheless just as effective. Well, he runs it a little differently. Holloway was taking it to the corner. Sullivan gets the force by Floyd. He gets rid of the ball beautifully, exactly as he should, and then it comes down to a matter of speed. Stafford's been rested. He's got it. Missouri defense doesn't. Live from Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri, Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. Been a long day for Missouri fans. Oklahoma really putting it to them here, 51-6. to Been a long time since Oklahoma played well in this stadium. Wallace on the kick return, stumbles as he crosses the 20. And gets it out to the 22-yard line, and that's where Missouri will put their offense back on the field. And it's been a long day for them against this top-ranked Sooner defense. It'll be a lot of long days for a lot of offensive teams this year before the year's out for Oklahoma. This is a building time, though, and I spoke about it earlier. It's a building time offensively and defensively. You get those young kids on film, see how they perform in a situation like this. It'll come in handy down the road for Missouri. Warren Seitz remains the Missouri quarterback. Vernon Boyd in a tailback runs into the middle of that Sooner defense, and that's the heart of that team. And they don't get very far when that happens. Uh, you run off tackle, you run into trouble. You cut back, you run into Tony Casillas. There's not a whole lot of holes there. A whole lot of holes. And he got some help, which he doesn't normally need, from Dante Jones and Brad McBride. Short game for Vernon Boyd. And it'll be second and eight for the Tigers. Seitz will throw it, has time, delivers it to Adrian McBride. He's got a first down at the 35, and Dante Jones makes sure he gets no more. 
So a nice throw by Seitz and a good pattern by McBride. It, it's a zone, as you can expect, with a, a huge lead. McBride finds a dead spot. Seitz right on target. Now looking for a big play. Nothing there. He's surrounded. That's why you play a zone. See, you play a zone because you drop the people back and you can prevent the big play. You can't always prevent the completion, but they're not going to break it for long yardage. Man-to-man, -man, you can get the big play. 13-yard pickup on the play and a Missouri first down at the 35-yard line as they move with seven minutes left in this ballgame. They run it with John Red straight up the gut, breaks a couple of tackles. Red still on his feet and gets to midfield. An excellent run from John Red, giving Missouri something to smile about. Liddell Glenn finally brought him down. These 51 points, the most that a Missouri team has given up since 1974. Now this is your basic bowling ball, 5'9", 207 pounds. Red, nobody really gets a good shot at him. Jones had a pretty good shot, but Red bounced right off of him and driving low into the secondary, picks up good yardage. And now John Red's a junior, and that'll stand for something come Monday. He's playing hard. First down right at midfield for Missouri. Tony Casillas out of the Oklahoma lineup. Sites keeping it on the option. Should never have pitched that ball. And a good thing the sideline was close as Boyd just knocked it out. Warren said, well, let me just pitch this thing. It's getting late. And, uh, he's taken a few shots during the course of the year. We had a we had the game we had with Nebraska. Didn't he get in the chin in that game, Kev? Got it right in the chin. Needed stitches. It's been a rough year. For Sice, who did not open the year at quarterback, opened at wide receiver. Marlon Adler started the year at quarterback. Sites going to get it here. Down he goes. The blitz coming at an all-out blitz from Todd Smith. Nobody touched him, and boy, you defensive players love that, don't you? Somebody's got to yell. I mean, if you don't make the block, then at least yell and warn this guy. I'm surprised he didn't see him. Sites, nah, come think of it, I'm not surprised he didn't see him. He was looking the other way, and uh, that'll you'll hear about that one in the huddle. Lucky that he held on to the ball. Yeah, Warren saying, excuse me, fellas, but who was supposed to block that guy? Third, or loss of five, so it'll be third and 15. Screen most is, of the, excuse me, screen has worked pretty well here for... Uh, most of the crowd of 50,000 plus is headed for the exits. Down the sidelines they go. That one incomplete intended for Anthony Frazier, who just came into the game on that particular play. And yeah, he just came back onto the field, too. He was four yards out of bounds on that pattern. So Adler will come on to punt it away in 548 remaining. And with Oklahoma's wishbone running out the clock, takes on an entirely different dimension. Adler will just pound it into the end zone. That'll help the stats for him. 55-yard punt on the fly with that wind at your back. And with 5.43 left, Oklahoma takes over again from their own 20. You see the score. Schwitzer ready to notch the victory here. Leading 51-6 with 5.43 remaining in this game. Kevin Slate along with Kevin Kiley. Glad you've stayed with us this afternoon. Sun has finally come out, but that's not going to make anybody in Columbia feel any better. Maloney gets wrapped up, and I mean, he really got kissed. Lachey coming up with the ball, but a little bit late. That's good, tough defense there by Missouri. Scott Vallette was in there. Good, tough, hard hitting. Game's out of reach, but your pride isn't. You got to stay in there. You got the team and the school colors on. You got to play. No gain for Maloney, so it'll be second and ten. Rodney Anderson in there again at fullback. And still is the left halfback. There's Rodney Anderson straight up the middle. He gets it out across the 25 before he's wrapped up and dropped. Middle guard has to hold his ground. It's really important for a defense for the middle guard to hold his ground and hold up the center and hopefully the guard. If you can do that, it gives your linebackers room to work. Here, the center for Oklahoma turns the middle guard for Missouri, and you see that's what opened up the hole, and the back was able to get in there. He's got to get lower. He's got to push that center back. If, if the center does it alone and you don't have to and you don't have to double team the middle guard, you're in trouble. <laughs> Third and four for the Sooners, and they run Anderson first down and then some. He's out across the 35 to about the 38 as he gets into the Missouri secondary. 
And that's another Oklahoma first down. How did they get a first down? You know, at this point, you got to figure the wishbone. You got to be coming up as a linebacker. You got to get close to the line of scrimmage. Make them pass. Really, the, the game plan hasn't changed. The, the game is really out of reach, but you need to get up in there, and that's what happened. See, Walker, the linebacker, got up in a little bit too close, and Anderson was able to slip right by him. It's a tough position to be in defensively. You really don't know what to do. First down sooner, Glenn Sullivan running this wishbone, gives it to Anderson again, and Best Weber really stuck him straight on. That's good play defensively, Missouri. Hang it tough, hang it tough, working for jobs in the future. Let's take a look at these linebackers. There you go, number 34, that's Best Weber. Nice play, head up. That's the way to make a tackle. Pickup of three, second and seven for the Sooners. 500 total yards now for Oklahoma. Third straight game in which they've gone over the 500 total yard mark. Here's Damon Stell trying to read Maloney's block and finally just runs out of room and ducks across the 40. You're right, Damon. He ran out of the field. He had some nice moves. We put those to music. We'd have a nice music piece. He was waiting to read that block by Maloney. And Actually, Maloney did a pretty good job of hemming the guy in, but there just wasn't any room for no, Stell to go outside of it. When he looked up, there was Woody Woodenhofer standing there. And you know Woody's going to make the tackle. Yeah. He's coming a little closer. <laughs> At the 41, third down now, and a long six for Oklahoma. Sullivan ducks up field, doesn't come close. Best Weber has him, Walker has him, and Bollock also joining in. So the Tigers stop Oklahoma. And the pride of Missouri's defensive team really showing forth there. Nice and they'll job. Get the ball back. Nice job here defensively. Watch him stop the fullback right in the center of this thing. Bang! You're not going anywhere. And now they come up to get Sullivan, and he's not going anywhere either. That's great reaction from a tired defense late in the game. So Winchester will have to punt it into the wind. Wallace back deep for the Missouri Tigers with 2.14 remaining. Pretty good kick into the wind. He hangs it up there. Fair catch by Wallace, and he takes it at his own 27. Fair catch. So Missouri will have one last possession before Barry Switzer escapes with his first victory in Columbia since 1979. Been a long drought for Switzer. He's not used to that. Very few teams have dominated Oklahoma on anybody's field for a long time. But this guy, I'll tell you, one and eight, okay, we'll take it this year, I think, is probably the feeling in, uh, in, Columbia, in Columbia. But uh, I really don't think uh, for years to come, very, very long in the future before this team is a good, strong football team. 37-yard punt into the wind. Sights under a heavy rush, guns it out and completes it on the far side to Clark. That's a Missouri first down at the 38-yard line. That's a good play. Really well executed. Nice pattern. And the pass is thrown just high enough and just far enough. Look at the defender, how the ball's thrown just, ooh, just over his hands and right on the sideline. That's a nice play by Seitz and Clark. Clark, a junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. First down, Missouri, at their own 38-yard line. to Eddie Essen, straight up the gut. He's close to midfield. Gets out to the 47-yard line, a pickup of eight or nine yards. Notre Dame pouring it on Ole Miss. Vanderbilt, a team we saw earlier in the year leading Kentucky at the half. Clemson now starting to come back. There's the stunner. Florida was ranked number one in one poll, and they lost to Georgia today, 17-3. to Those junkyard dogs getting after them. Second and short again, Essen, and he has the first down across midfield. Miliazzo has him before Essen could get any further. Coming right at you here. That's another guy, a nice looking runner. They've got some subs in for Oklahoma, but Missouri's still pounding away. Essen leaning, driving, diving for a first down for Missouri. We saw John Clay, the great tackle for Missouri, eight yards downfield trying to throw a block. Running the scores at you. There's Oklahoma State. That one at the half. 
Jim Everett must not be having a good day for Purdue. BYU people kind of not talking about them anymore. There's a big one in the Big Eight in terms of bowl consideration at Kansas, Colorado leading that one. Bill McCartney has to be happy. One minute and two seconds remaining. We'll be back to wrap this one up for you after these words from Bud Light. Back live, that's a happy group of Sooners. Big day for them, over 500 yards total offense. Jamel Holloway setting the single game total offense record in OU history, breaking the one set by Jack Mildred. Warren Seitz completing it to Eddie Essen, who makes a sliding catch as he goes out of bounds for about an eight yard pickup with less than a minute remaining. And two weeks from today, we'll bring you our final telecast of the season from Lawrence, Kansas, where Missouri will battle Kansas, throw all the records out the window when those two get together. That's one of the greatest rivalries in college football. We'll kick it off at 11.30 a.m. Central Time, November 23rd, two weeks from today. Hope you can join us along the Big 8 Raycom Network. Missouri facing second and three. Under a minute to go. Seitz now throwing it downfield for Frazier, but he overthrows him. Crudup was back there covering for Oklahoma. Nice job by John Clay at the top of the screen. Doing a good job pass block. A lot of these kids are pro prospects and uh, it doesn't pay to let down no matter what the score. It's kind of interesting if you're a fan and you're at the game, uh, you get a different perspective. You can watch individual players as, as Kevin and I can and you watch them late in the game in certain situations, the scores, and the, you see the kids that, that really keep fighting. Warren Seitz to put it up again. Fires to Junebug Johnson who drops the ball. Vickers was over there just in case he caught it. Now we'd like to take this opportunity to thank the representatives of these two fine institutions for their assisting us in this telecast today. Our appreciation to the University of Oklahoma, Athletic Director Wade Walker and Head Coach Barry Switzer and his staff, along with Mike Treps and Pat Hanlon of the Oklahoma Sports Information Office. And from the University of Missouri, our thanks to Athletic Director Dave Hart and his staff, along with Joe Castiglione and Head Football Coach Woody Widenhofer, and the Dean of Sports Information Directors in the Big 8, Bill Callahan, who will be retiring at the end of this season. And we're glad we'll be able to do his last game. We thank all of those gentlemen, one and all. Seitz nearly has it intercepted. Todd Smith again back there for the Sooners. He's played a good game getting in some work. Our executive producer, Don McGuire. Today's game produced by Kent Samuel and directed by Lou Renoni. Our associate producer, Ted Garcia. And the technical director, Chip Siegel, always doing a fine job. Our audio folks down in the truck. Everybody pitching in to bring you this one today, which has just 41 seconds of life in it. Oklahoma taking over on downs, and they'll try to run out those last 41 seconds, and pretty certain they'll be successful at it. That's going out on a limb. Maloney trying a left side. Vest Weber's there. So was Lachey and Bond Howery for Missouri. Okay. Probably just one more play Stop. with 25 seconds remaining. Rick Ray, our president, and D. Ray, the executive vice president. And some of the other folks that you don't see, but always working behind the scenes. 14 seconds left, and this will be the last snap of this one. Sullivan handing it off to Anderson, who's running hard into Missouri territory as the gun will sound. And the final here, a big win for the Missouri, or for the Oklahoma Sooners over the Missouri Tigers. Kevin, it just went Oklahoma's way from the start. Well, you're talking about, a, uh, I think, a program that's built and a, and a program that's building. And uh, two or three years down the road, we may have a little bit of a closer game, but it was just too much talent, too much strength from a very highly ranked Oklahoma team against the Missouri team that's trying to get to that plateau. And don't count Woody out, record not too good, but he's a, he's a pretty good coach and a class guy. And of course, Switzer, his record speaks for itself over the years. All right, a big win for Barry Switzer this afternoon here before a crowd of 50,000 plus at Furrow Field in Columbia, Missouri. Today's Big 8 game has been brought to you by Bud Light, the light beer with a first name and taste. Everything else is just the light. By new Valvoline Fourguard, the motor oil for today's harder working four-cylinder engines. 
and by Black & Decker M47 Series Power Tools. They work with your hands as if they were one. Once again, the final score from Columbia, Oklahoma 51, Missouri 6. For Kevin Kiley, I'm Kevin Slate, reminding you that in two weeks, the Missouri Tigers will battle the Kansas Jayhawks in one of the oldest rivalries in college football. We'll have it for you at 11.30 a.m. Central Time on the 23rd. Kevin Slayton for Kevin Kiley. So long from Perot Field in Columbia, Missouri. A big win for Tony Casillas and the Sooners.